and welcome to a new episode of the Eastern Laria Podcast, your show for news, notes, reviews, and opinions on the world of Japanese pro wrestling here on cagematch.net. I'm your host, Stringer, as always, joined by Dylan, and we are recording this on the Monday after WrestleMania, but we're not talking about WrestleMania. It's just a, just a nice Monday, isn't it? Stringer, we are back. Eight years since I've been on the show on this episode. Yes. Eight Going years back. since we've been friends on Facebook. I was a letter to today. Oh, look at that. Facebook let us know. Is my, my account still there? I've been there. there it is. <laughs> Eight years. <laughs> uh, who, who knew? <laughs> I, I would never know that. But, man, I'm feeling so strong about today. Still remember it like it was yesterday coming on. I remember the show we did the year after, which was talking about WrestleMania weekend and the first ever uh, spring break uh, that we talked about. Getting into arguments over Omega and Cody and Ring oh, of yeah. Honor. Uh, and yeah, Cody, seven years later, finished his story from the Ring of Honor <laughs> show uh, coming off here. But not just in America and WrestleMania weekend. There was an amazing Japanese presence, which there was even back then as well. Uh, even the first show I did was about, like, Asuka and Nakamura were coming in to, to right. WWE uh, back then. Uh, you know, so the Japanese presence has only grown more and more. Uh, always really proud of that. You, quality, quantity, all of that's debatable, of course. But just the fact that it's happening uh, is a really cool thing. And it's got to be fired up. Still hitting that Kaioken times 10 for this week's Eastern Lariat doing some big things, having some fun, and hopefully we got it. Well, I know for sure we have a lot to talk about. We have a lot. That's why we're not just, like, uh, wasting any time on more WrestleMania weekend stuff. Just want to say that I liked the TJPW show. It was a good vibes show. It was nothing special to uh, really sink your teeth into. Just just good stuff. I want to say that the show uh, the week prior to that, the TJPW show from Sumo Hall, wasn't even better vibes show of course it had the great coronation of Mio Watanabe finally winning the Prince of Princes title in a great great match with Mio Yamashita finishing out a great show most successful show in their history so that then led to them coming to America and also having a very successful show there so good for TGPW this time of the year Absolutely, and if you want to hear more extended thoughts, go to the Patreon, patreon.com slash Eastern Lariat. I reviewed the show in full, uh, the Sumo Hall show uh, for Tokyo Joshi Pro, had my thoughts on it as well. Uh, definitely the most successful show in their history. That's It cannot be disputed at this point. And it played out as I thought it would, uh, You know, to be honest with you. They did the right thing. No crazy swerves or anything like that. They just went with what uh, they should have done, and... It was a big moment for a lot of fans. Like you said, yes. the stuff with America, big moment for all of the wrestlers there. I know that a lot of the people that came from Japan, just on a personal level, never mind the wrestling, just had a lot of fun uh, being in Philly. Hopefully we got some cheesesteaks for everybody up there. Uh, I'm sure. Had some fun. And I uh, had a good time for all involved. Yes, of course. Riso Endo and Suzume are also winning the Prince Tag title. So... I made of it. <laughs> yes, one half of my prediction with the two of them is now come to fruition. But now one of them has to win the princess, uh, the international princess title, and defend it against the other one to make my prediction come true. Oh, okay. Uh, see, see, that's all come together. Uh, how was the Stardom show? Uh, nothing show, to be honest with you. Uh, all of the weekend shows, to me, in my opinion, were not that good. In all, in all honesty. Uh, I thought that a lot of the wrestlers were not giving their full effort. And, uh, you know, you see a lot of the indie talent. It's like a far cry from where it was, even back when we were talking about it. <laughs> this is a show we did, I would say. Just uh, so many people have been signed. People have left. People have retired. It's just a totally different landscape. Uh, there were some all right matches and shows. Um, but even then, like we were talking about it off the air, I thought yes. the – uh, like Shuri to me had one of the better matches, and even that match, like her versus Masha on the G- uh, JCW versus the World, was like the crowd was dead because it was like 1 a.m. <laughs> yeah, that, that was very unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I thought the the work was good. Like Abi and Omra put on a good match uh, at the Blood Sports show. Uh, there was Dragon Gate wrestlers all over the place. DDT had their show. Uh, if you're exactly, in, in, yeah, I was just gonna say I, I we talked about it off the air too. I thought that DDT. From the shows that I watched that weekend, the DDT show was the best one. I really liked the main event between Yuki Uno and Mike Bailey. Made me want to see Mike Bailey once again in DDT. I miss him so much there. He was such a perfect fit 
for the promotion. Liked, um, I liked Mao and Billy Starks as well, much like uh, I liked Endo and uh, Andrew Everett, as well as the opening match, Chris Brooks and Lycos against Brian Keith and Shota. A really good match with um, showing all the different aspects of DDT on one show, so true DDT show on that weekend. Yeah, had the comedy with Shitan and uh, Yoshihiko yeah, was there. So, yeah, 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 yeah. See, so yeah, it was a vibe show for sure. Yes, uh, with some good wrestling in there. We talked about it off air too. The ETU versus Dragon Gate show I thought was really, really good. I liked the Shun Skywalker and Eric Price match. And I also liked the main event between Santana and Yamato very much. I, it was the first singles match I saw from Santana after AEW, and I thought that him and Yamato worked really well together. I clicked from the first moment on. Their styles matched perfectly, and uh, I would like to see that that again. And um, overall, it seemed like that the that the uh, chemistry between ETU, the ETU guys, and the Dragon Gate guys was really there. Um, however, we also, Dylan, we talked about it off the air. Maybe we can go to that talking point here first before we forget it. Sure. We talked about the roster of Dragon Gate. And uh, we were trying to find out who really is the great high flyer in this yeah. roster right now. Because they always used to have like one standout guy in their roster. But we're looking at this roster right now and there really is a roster that's getting more and more big guys. We have Big Boss Shimizu. We have uh, Ishin, who is trying to get a, to become a heavyweight. Even a guy like Benke, he can be up to 100 kilograms with, with, without any problem. He can also <laughs> slim down to 83. But even guys like Kota Minura, they're not the classic Dragon Gate high flyer dudes. Um, I don't know if if this is a development that's to their... Advantages because even a guy like Shun Skywalker, he's not a traditional Dragon Gate high flyer either. He used to be when he was a face. He he used to be much more of a fast paced wrestler, but nowadays as a heel, he's not. Uh, He's he's great in his own ways, but not in that traditional way. I don't know if it's to the advantages of Dragon Gate to have lots more of these bigger guy wrestlers in comparison to have one or two on the roster to stand out against the uh, smaller and more fast-paced guys. You know, I think that it's not necessarily size that would be a problem, although it is in this particular case with DG. I just want to say, too, that somewhere uh, Amy Hay was smiling at you putting over Santana uh, going way the Yamato at that <laughs> match there. Uh, so shout out to shout Amy. Shout out to that. Amy, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so I found her I spirit there. animal. With the uh, woman <laughs> in the in the crowd cheering on Johnny Valletta. Uh, that's that's another thing. Uh, but yeah, uh, the DG. I think that um, it's not necessarily size; it's more the stylistic. So, for example, somebody like Yoshioka is, uh, even though he's injured right now, he's a, not uh, like a heavyweight, but he wrestles like one. Like he wrestles closer to a Tanahashi mm-hmm. than uh, like you know. Uh, Masato Yoshino or, or Dory back in the day. We, that's kind of what we were talking about is like, you, you know, this is something we talked about months ago, uh, looking at the roster now versus, um, you know, kind of its peak for us, or at least when I was starting anyway, like watching it late, late 2000s, so to speak. Uh, peak of BB Hulk and <laughs> Shingo, I guess you could say, <laughs> their, their rivalry. And it's just so different now than it was then. But I would argue that it's not a Dragon Gate exclusive issue. I think that it's kind of a thing with every company in Japan where a lot of these juniors guys coming up now really don't want to push the envelope in terms of explosive, high-flying, crazy video game movesets. There's really not that guy in any company to me. A lot of the juniors want to wrestle more like heavyweights, which it's there's nothing wrong with that on paper, but I do think we're missing in Dragon Gate and just wrestling in general. I think we're missing that really explosive dude, the kind of guy like uh, DK – back when I started watching, was like a mind-blowing level guy. Uh, you know, was like a right. great, great high flyer. Um, now he's still a great wrestler in his own right, but obviously it still does a lot of cool stuff as well. But there's not really that next generation that's really raised the bar. You know, if you look at the roster now at DG, you know, we were and this was kind of, again, spurred on by the the WrestleMania weekend stuff. Uh, Janela had talked about wanting to recreate the 
the Blood Generation Do Fixer, which is a legendary match from 2006. Everybody wishes that they could recreate. I think <laughs> uh, they even tried to compare that to the Stardom match on Ring of Honor and be like, maybe this could be like that. But if you look at who they put in that match, like you mentioned, Ben K, he's not that style like that they were like back then of the crazy high flyer guys, high speed stuff nobody's ever seen before. And I love Ben K as a talent. I've, even when he was at his lowest, never getting pushed at all, uh, I always said he was such a great wrestler and really deserved a lot better. But he's not that dude when it comes to the high flying, the spectacular high speed action. Like, who would that guy be? Like, who would those guys be if you even tried to put together a match like that with Dragon Gate? Or, or really, like I said, the whole company. We saw the Junior All-Star Show last year, and there really wasn't anybody like that on there either. Like, the main event was Watto in there, who, who's improved. Don't get me wrong. A good wrestler and had some great moments. Yeah. But not the guy that's going to be like, oh, he's unbelievable. <laughs> like, he's blown our minds. There's nobody like that in Japanese like, wrestling. Like, we talked about, like, Atsuki Aoyagi, Rising Hayato. They are they're good high flyers, but they're not, like, changing the game f- for high flying in Japan yeah. right now. Uh, what about, like, a dude like uh, Jackie Funky Kamai? I think he is an excellent wrestler and, like, one of their best, but he's more like a great underdog babyface uh, mm. to me. Like, his, his strength is in his character uh, and the way he wrestles, not necessarily the explosive action, the, the uh, nonstop high-flying and stuff. And he's a great talent. There's nothing wrong with him, but I think that they're missing that guy. And like I said, he might be one of the better ones, even if you just look at his moves. You know, you, you look at the tag match they had a couple of years ago, with Shun and Diamante versus uh, Jason and Jackie. That was like a match of the year level match, and that was a great match. But that, that, like you said, it's not like it pushed the envelope and changed the game for all of junior wrestling. That was a one-off spectacular match, which was great. But it wasn't anything – it's not like they had all kinds of moves we had never seen before or done in a way like the, the Blood Generation of Doofixer match was. Yeah. I think there is no way to even think to recreate this match, but they always try. Yeah. Evolve uh, took over that six-man match and never worked to the strengths, that, you know, never went to the highlights of the Dragon Gate match, and I, I would just say just to let it go, man. And, how could, and like I said, the talent level now is great in terms of just all-around wrestling. Like I said, Jackie mm. Funky Kame is an incredible performer, in my opinion. But if you are trying to put together the craziest match possible, uh, which we saw at WrestleMania weekend. If you watch any of these shows, you could bet your ass you saw a scramble match of some sort that they threw a bunch of guys in to do high spots in, and none of them were like game changing, even in America. So I guess it's like a problem of the whole world, <laughs> you know, or at least Japan and America. Because like I said, there's guys in CML right now, like uh, Neon and Futuro. Oh yeah, they're the ones that are pushing the envelope. Like, and and they're showing that you that it can be done. It's not impossible to Absolutely. do it. Absolutely. The people in Japan just aren't doing it right now, and I think that's a big problem. They're missing that guy. I always say, um, when I came in, that dude for me was Sugi San, like Yoshitsune. He had a million gimmicks back then. Uh, you know, you liked El Dorado. <laughs> like, of course. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like he he was all over the place uh, wrestling in a ton of different names, but he was the guy. He was doing stuff that nobody else could do in the world. Like you couldn't see it anywhere, no matter who you were. And he just totally ch- like um, changed everything for junior heavyweight wrestling at that time. And he was really getting a buzz for that. Uh, his career went in some weird ways, obviously. <laughs> that did uh, prelude pr- lead uh, to him having the. That's nicely put. Yeah, it, it didn't lead to high, you know prolonged success or a legendary run. Although he did bounce back eventually. Like the like it took a decade almost, but. He was able to bounce back, uh, but not where he was before. And now there's not that guy that I can point to and be like, yes, X is the guy that is – you have to watch him. You could show him to anybody, and they'll be dazzled. Uh, There's a lot of good high flyers, like you said. Uh, Atsuki is one of them. Uh, Hayato, Jackie, uh, DG. Uh, I think Dragon Daya is a really strong high flyer. Yes, he uh, is. In a a lot of ways. But, again, these guys aren't – you know, if you, and like I said, if you put your heart and soul into this and you said, look, Hiromu has called you for another heavyweight festival. And he says, damn it, we have to have the craziest six man tag match possible with all the juniors in Japan. We have to recreate Blood Generation Do Fixer. Like, who would you even turn to that would be able to to even attempt to do something like that? It would have to be, of course, Dragon Dyer would have to be in. 
Yeah, that, that he's kind of the guy I think of. Like if, if, he, if you put a gun to if my he, head, if you had the courage, you could try. And even then, like I said, Yoshioka to me is not that guy. He's more like a, a Tanahashi yeah, wrestler. Is. And Kakuta's definitely a heavyweight uh, as well. well you know, I, but you know, this, this series of matches that The Courage and Natural Vibes had a couple of months ago, it was really special. I thought, I think this is the best shot that they would have right now. And that's the thing. Those are great matches. Like, mm-hmm. nobody's saying DG doesn't have good workers yes, now. Yes. Like, the talent is great. But they don't have this thing that makes them special in terms of, like, the high-speed style. Uh, they're not – like, those matches were not anything – you know, if you could, you could see that style of match in a Noah. You know, like, it's not like uh, like it was back then. Like, I remember when Hulk and Shingo were the tag champions of Noah. They were, like, big splash guys, like, you know, like, totally different than the Noah juniors who were more – Kenta, you know, like Kanamaru, grounded type of dudes and, and hard hitters and blah, blah, blah. You know, like there's not really those guys. And like I said, those are great matches. There's nothing wrong with that that style now. But I don't think we have those guys in any company. Again, not just DG, but really any company yeah, that yeah. is raising the bar, like you said, in terms of high speed, you know, video game style action. I don't think there's that guy. And that's why we have to kind of reach and be like, well, Okay, maybe it won't be like maybe so and so doesn't fit, but they're great wrestlers. So we'll just you know, and you, and you would, but if you put the courage in, they wouldn't be what Doofixer was. No, you know? it's it would it will always just be a victim of its own expectations because we always think of how truly game changing that match in two thousand six was for yeah, wrestling as a whole, and that's just a big big hurdle to overcome. And even something like uh, my favorite match, I watch it every year on my birthday, legit. Uh, I did it on must see matches. Uh, my, my, one of my shows was on. Uh, Kenta Marafuji from NOAA, uh, 2006. Love it. Like, first match I ever saw from Japan. Will always love it. That match influenced a lot of people, like, afterwards, you know, to where, where if you look at any indie show coming out for the next five, ten years, you could see a Kenta and Marafuji match and they weren't even there, <laughs> you know, like in, in the building. Um, but that's a style that's, more that really is has survived so to speak there are a lot of guys who wrestle like that now to be quite honest with you uh there's not guys that ca- that just ca- are capable of pushing the envelope the way that those the dragon gate match was uh overall whereas the kenta and marafuji they were great wrestlers like again and i loved them and i'm not saying anything negative on anybody who wants to imitate them because they're great wrestlers and you should want to be like them but maybe not now uh, but <laughs> but uh, you know, when it, that style survived and people were able to do it. You can replicate that style with a lot of different ways now, but in terms of pushing the envelope, in terms of the high speed, like the Dragon Gate guys did and how influential it was, there's nobody really like that now in Japan. I think it's kind of a sad thing, and it's a thing that – it's not like it's a new problem. What you were talking about with Dragon Gate with the heavyweights, this has been going on. It's just it's yeah, something sure. that kind of ha- – it's, it's something that's kind of happened, and we all just kind of let it happen, <laughs> like uh, under our noses, to now we're at like – Oh, uh, the best high flyer. We're we're struggling. Like you know, you're struggling to find these guys to have the epic, crazy, high speed high flyers. And you're, I think you, you know, yeah. Guy like Ryoya Tanaka is really in a good way. He, to me, again, I don't consider him a high speed wrestler. I think he's more like a T Hawk. Is is kind of who he reminds me of. Who's a fantastic wrestler who I love very much. And Tanaka he's more, is a, he's more high flying than T Hawk is. A little bit, but I wouldn't could put him up there. Uh, with like Sugi in, in his prime or, or DK or somebody like that uh, in his prime. I think he's more of a – I like his chops a lot. I love his selling. It's amazing. I like. I think he's got everything it takes. I think he's a great fit with the courage. I wouldn't put him as a like over-the-top video game moveset guy. Uh, maybe maybe y'all disagree with me, but I don't think of him like that. I think of him as a great wrestler who has a ton of potential and maybe one day will reach the top of the company. But I don't look at him as a, an innovator, somebody doing stuff nobody's seen before. No, that's not. That's definitely not the case. He's just doing the stuff that he's doing very well. Yeah, and, and he's great. Again, that's a totally different thing, and I have nothing against him. Mm-hmm. If you look at the DG roster, there's tons of great talent like that. But I'm just saying, we have we're missing that guy or a number of guys, like it used to be. Where who is the video game guy? The guy who's doing stuff nobody could see anywhere else. Uh, you know, kind of like you know, Kingo, who people in. used to talk about like that was Takuma Fujiwara when he was starting out in Dragon Gate. He he had a chance. Yeah, yeah, he 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 was probably the closest thing. If he had stuck around for DG, I think he could have been that guy. 
But nowadays, he's just nothing. Well, with Glate, it's just... It's not a good environment for that style of matches anyway, even though it has... Like, they're in a lot of ways, they're kind of... They're kind of closer to an aesthetic to what old school DG was in a lot of ways, like the guys mm-hmm. they brought in. Mm-hmm. That's uh, true. But, yep. but they don't. It's not well run or promoted, and like you know, it's it's a tough yeah. situation with it's them. A tough but situation. They're not, it's, they, they are they, kind of underrated, in my opinion, actually. Because I think a lot of people are down on them by default, but they do have a lot of good talent. They do, they do. But there is a lot of moving parts with them that yeah. they should have stuck with Dragon Gate to just let it play out and work on that talent level instead of just touring around for the sake of doing that. And plus, they, tr- they, they fell in the same trap that we were talking about with DG, where they have so many different styles now, and nothing is focused on. Like, mm-hmm. they've got the, the shoot style type of deal, but it's not really focused on. They tried to mess around with the women's division a little bit. It de- didn't really go anywhere. Yeah. Uh, now you- they are big into booking Mexican wrestlers. Yeah, and, and again, I have no problem with that. A lot of these people they're booking are talented. Um, sure. It's just the promotion doesn't really have an identity. We kind of talked about that when they did their yeah. Sumo Hall show last year. Um, you know, But they've got good wrestlers for sure. Uh, I thought that their match they had, you were talking about the no ropes match exactly. uh, that they had. It was really good. And it was, it, those guys are both talented. Uh, like Ta- Takonori Ito was his best match that I've seen from him. Yeah, I agree. Against So Daimonji, also a very good guy. Oh yeah, Daimonji's so great, great performer for Big Japan. I like seeing him anywhere he gets a chance. Yeah, yeah. So like, like these two really good. Uh, Hayato Tamura as the champion. I think they are doing all right when it comes to the top of the company. But there is so many moving parts. Just like I said, in in the mid card and in the undercards, they are bringing in so many guys in and out. Um, and most of the time, these these Mexican wrestlers they are part of uh, Black Generation International a lot. But sometimes they're just brought in. To be there. Yeah, I mean, look at this match they had on, on this show here. Hartley, Kaito Ishida, a DG guy. Yep. Uh, Kotaro Suzuki, a legendary Noah guy. It is time. Uh, they took on Jun Tansho, who wrestled one guy. Good wrestler. We respect him a lot. Uh, I think we both agree that he's good. He's good. Uh, yeah, Yu Izuka, love his shoot style stuff. He, they never really capitalized on him as much as they could have, in my opinion. Uh, and, and Michiko as a team, who is, uh, you know, leading the Joshi faction that they had. Uh, uh, yeah, and Diamond she's, she's, she's still announced as Diamond Egoist, even though there is nobody yeah, of Diamond Egoist left. They're all gone, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, Risa, J- uh, Janai Kai, they're all gone. <laughs> then. So, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Like I said, that, that's, that's a, a problem, good example though. of a match where they that's just throw everything sense. together. No. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, that kind of drifted away from our point. But uh, Glade, I we don't talk about them a lot, but it's because they don't do a lot to, to get attention, unfortunately. Uh, I actually and, like this show. If you want to, the show was good. And they're good. They're a good, easy company to watch. If you exactly. want, like, just turn, sit back, take a, their shows are usually pretty short, all within two hours, almost. Hook it up on YouTube. Almost three hours because the main event was so long with oh, yeah, yeah. minutes almost. But it's that's a rare exception actually. But this is, definitely is. A good example of what great is all about this this complete show here from April four. Yeah, and then, like I said, you look it up and down the card. Every match has some good people in it. You know, oh, uh, Hayato was in the opening match at Tam- Tamara. Um, you know, he's the champion, but whatever opening match on this show, fine. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, Onitsuka, love him, really good wrestler. Kodama's done some good things. Kawakami, Kamino. yeah, Kamino yeah, Kamino. 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 Yeah, he yeah he he showed out pretty good too for uh, the indie guy. Like has really taken advantage of his bookings. Yep, he's in, a guy from Basara, mostly working on his own promotion Basara, but also getting work elsewhere. Here in Great, for example, he had a brief uh, feud with T Haw a couple of months ago as well. Uh, I don't think they did the title match. Oh, they did. They the did. Oh, yeah, they did. remember they yeah, threw they the talent. Yes. Yeah, it was a bad bad ending, but yeah. um, it, a good match up until that. But um. <laughs> Uh, like Soma Watanabe could have been a star for them. They did some goofy stuff with him in MMA. Uh, that, yeah, another, uh, part... another high flying guy that never really went to all the levels that he could have been. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, yeah, yeah, when he came in, uh, when, when uh, he was Pegaso in, uh, in, in Wrestle One, yeah, he looked like he could be a high flying guy. In Glate, they kind of. He's had such an up and down run. It's hard to even describe, to be honest. But he's he a good always talent. struggled very hard where to fit him in. 
Yeah, yeah, and he's a guy that I thought had a lot of upside, and I thought his match against T-Hawk last year for the title was great. Mm -hmm. uh, they had he had, did a really good job, but he, great talent. Izuchi, great talent, like shoot style guy. Tanaka, legend. Lindemann uh, in the next match, we we love him. Uh, actually, they, like his his motivation seems to have gone down the last year. So, what do you think about the debuting guy, Go Miyake? I thought he looked pretty good uh, against Lindemann. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, he had, I don't. He had some issues moving around the ring. Still, it looked uh, really wooden what he did, but still, uh, I thought he would, brought good energy. Yeah, I, I think you've got stuff to work with him, and I, I kind of, you know, I never want to judge these guys so early. Same in the next match where they had uh, the guy with Ishikawa, Ricky Itaka. Uh, yeah, Itaka. yeah, Ita Itaka. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's too early to judge him, but it seems like that it's nice that they're getting new guys in. Uh, I, I will say that. But yeah, like look at the talent up and down. You know, we've named a bunch of guys. They're all good. Yamamura was in there with T Hawk, uh, like in, the, in that match. Um, and yeah, like there's a lot of talent on the roster. Yes. They just don't use them that well. And and none of these guys are definitely next generation high flyers. No, that's <laughs> so definitely yeah. true. Let's uh, focus our attention then on New Japan Pro Wrestling, Dylan, because we you just said it. You talked about the next generation, and that's a big talking point in this company. Obviously, we had Sakura Genesis from Sumo Hall, and I looked at the last Sumo Hall attendances for New Japan Pro Wrestling. One year ago, for Sakura Genesis in April, where Zanada beat Okada for the title, they had 6,510 people in attendance. The two G1 shows in August did 6,579 at 8,283, of course, with Okada and Naito in the main event. The Destruction Show in October did a devastating 5,002 people for Zanada and Evil. And this time, <laughs> they had 6,632 in attendance. Uh, would you say that it's, uh, it's a success? Well, it's, it's better than the October show. <laughs> it's a bit better than last year's uh, show as well. You know, actually, in general, their run the last couple of months has been pretty all right for their big shows. Uh, like the Naito and Sonata show they did in February did a nice number. Yep. Uh, the final did pretty good. And yeah, so... Oh, yeah. like it, uh, it, it, pick up final did much better than I thought it would. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like for all the talk, I mean, there's a lot of negative that I'm going to say <laughs> coming <laughs> forward, but and that we have said about the roster and everything else. I think with Naito as champion, that really elevates your floor as a company. Like right. we we saw where things could go if Sonata and Evil are <laughs> the main event in October. You're not getting that with Naito, I think, no matter who he would wrestle. Uh, like even if he wrestled one of those two. Uh, I think you have a really solid floor, and that's why he's so valuable, again, as, as champion. Like, I don't know if there's anybody else on this roster that you could count on for that level of sustained success. And even if he's not in the main event, just him being constantly at the top of the card, constantly in the shadows, even if you go with a different route like the New Japan Cup final, he wasn't in that, obviously, but it turned out really good uh, overall. So I think he really means a lot to the company and to the fans especially. Uh, which is why they're so reliant on him. And, and even in last year, ultimately, Sonata's reign was might as well have been an extension of an LIJ story, like more or less, that kind of led mm -hmm. into Naito's title win. That's why they always, again, why they rely on him and by extension his faction so much, which they did again with an international match on this show. So, yeah, very uh, nice number, uh, but not surprising with Naito. If you look at it, despite the negative feelings, on the company the last couple of months, their big shows have actually done pretty good and they're bouncing back a little bit. But I do think a lot of that is reliant on Naito constantly being in the spotlight. Yes, and Naito in the spotlight, it's, uh, it's also the thing that we had in the main event here. And I'm just looking at the cage match ratings and it's very interesting. When the match was first entered into the database, and the first rating was a 10, but then it had ratings between 3 and and 9 and 10, there are lots of 4.0 ratings, 5. And now it's gone up to have to, to a current total rating of 7.68. Of course, I'm talking about the Naito and Yoda Tsuji match. A match that I thought was very long and very long for the idea of Yoda Tsuji and his strengths usually being that he's very explosive in his matches. And I don't think that this style of a match really fits Uratsuji well. It's the style of match that they do in New Japan main events. And 
we've seen it with Okada that usually the main events had 10 to 15 minute stretches that were all right, but okay, nothing is, is happening within these uh, 15 minutes. But with Yoratsuji, I think much more than any New Japan talent they had in the last couple of years, he should have matches that really rock the crowd, that really have the big impact moves and not a 35-minute match where they have they had great spots in this match. They had the individual great spots in this match. Some of them didn't really work out, like the curb stomp from the apron to the floor that didn't really work out. But some of them did. But overall, I thought the the great spots that they had were really sparsely used in this match. And in the end, it turned out for me to be a match that I thought was all right, but nothing else. And I don't think that's the match that you want out of Naito and Yuratsuji. Dylan, how about you? I really agree with what you were saying, actually. It turned out all right, and it was all right for 35 minutes, which is a, a hard thing to do, uh, to kind of justify, so to speak. And this was a long show, and I, mind you, this one yeah. followed the completely overbooked Never Open Weight title match that really had every possible heel trope that you can think about. Do you think that they added extra time on it because of what happened in the junior title match? Mm, hmm. I, don't, I, I don't think that was a 90-second match plan. <laughs> no, no, surely not. But I don't think it would be a 20-minute match either. So I, I think yeah. the main event going 35 was planned. Well... Either way, it didn't turn out to be the most entertaining match, in my, in my opinion. Like, what a, you know, like I said, we can always speculate on why. The fact is, what happened, happened. And yes. what we saw was not that great, ultimately. And I, I said it before. I think this time it could have worked if they had l listened to my, my pro proclamations on the last show. And what I said, if you remember, to me, Suji's title match should have happened at the Dome. Like, not Sakura Genesis. Even though this did a good number and all, he feel, feel, feels like the guy that has the edge and the momentum that you would have needed. I think if you had built anticipation for this, this could have been a, an epic match that they, I think they clearly wanted to have here. Mm. I don't think it works when you know that Naito has another title shot in just a couple of days yeah. uh, coming coming after it. I think even to the fans in the crowd, it really took a little bit of an edge off to what it could have been. But uh, overall, I think that your your talk on Suji is totally correct. He's a guy that specializes in explosiveness, not necessarily having the epic match. Uh, he's got a great aura to him. When he walked out, he carried himself like he was going to win this match. Yep. And I really appreciated that fr from him. You know, he's like the opposite of the classic boo-boo face, <laughs> so, so, so to speak. But they they talked about it. Uh, you like you said the ring apron spot. It wasn't good. It was one of those things where like if somebody messes up a move, the announcer's like, ah, he didn't get all of it. Glancing blow. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I forget how Charlton said, but it was something like that. Yeah. Uh, they did uh, where it didn't look great, and you know that's all you can do. Uh, they came in. The crowd really came alive uh, a little bit after that when they got to the ring. They did the back and forth on the knees, like the forearm strikes. It felt like they rallied behind Suji good there, and I thought that's when they brought it together a little bit more. They did so many stomps and stuff from the turnbuckles and all of that. Yeah, that, uh, that really his thing. Yeah, he's nobody should try to be more like Seth Rollins, though. It's yeah. a problem. You need <laughs> to eliminate the traces of his game, and you're in your or <laughs> do it overall. But um, they did some good stuff. Uh, Naito hit his own version of the Gene Blast, which I uh, got a great reaction. Yeah, I that thought was that good. was a, yeah, that was a good spot. So there was good stuff by the end. Uh, if it was a, a little bit shorter, or maybe even a lot bit shorter, I think it would have been even better if they could have maximized. Like you said, if you just count the number of stomps they did, cut that down in about half, uh, take some of the time off that they wasted uh, selling, you could have gotten this down to a cool 25, uh, you know, and I think that would have been a lot more. And I definitely think it would be better if it were at an epic moment with the Dome where the, the, the situation and the circumstances really dictated them for 
for them to have this kind of match, which I don't think this did. Uh, you know, a one-off title shot after the cup kind of rush. You have a title match in a few mm-hmm. days. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's just me feeling that way, but I felt it did impact the match. But ultimately, the fans got into it by the end. So I don't think it was like a disaster or anything, but it wasn't an epic match or a great match that we'll be talking about by the, you know, by the end of the year or like this would be a legacy moment. I don't think. OK, so this match didn't make Suji turn any kind of corner into the guy. I was just so going to ask, like, where is he heading right now? Because like you said, it's it's a it's a rushed title match after the cup right now, a couple of weeks after the cup without any. Great build, to be quite honest. They had all the championship talk prior to that, uh, to a confusion of a lot of people, because <laughs> in the end, it turned out to be nothing, because Suji lost the match like everybody expected. So why did we even bring up the uh, double title and the intercontinental title and stuff like that? Uh, I mean, he's he's probably gained something throughout the tournament, because he had great matches, for example, with El Fantasmo and But is he anywhere more advanced than he was before the title match? I think winning the cup helped him. I think it, I think if he had lost in the final, it wouldn't be that different, actually. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know, he already gained a lot by having a great tournament, uh, getting to the final. I think if you had just had Goto win the tournament, and you could have the same thing here, he loses the match here, obviously, that would have saved your first title shot for Suji, which I, I personally think is a big thing. Like, And we're going to talk about it with the All Japan. You can't recreate your first at anything. Like, yes. This, this is it. Like, You can never go back. And he's still got his first win, to be fair. it's not, Again, it's not, I'm not sitting here saying it's the end of the world. They made this huge mistake for it. But I do think it could have been a, done a bit better if you had saved his first title shot for that huge epic moment. And I don't think this actually really helped him that much overall. Mm. I agree. Mostly I agree with that. And uh, now, this is, of course, the question going to Winnie City Riot. Is John Moxley winning the title now? Yeah, he came out after the main event, uh, too. Um, Naito, we got to hear Naito speak a little bit of English on, on there as well. Pretty good, uh, John Moxley. Yeah, better than in Spanish, maybe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but... I think this match does have a lot of anticipation to it, especially among Western fans, uh, English-speaking viewers. I think it be some, could be a really good match as well. Uh, it depends on how far they go with it. Naito, to me, hasn't had the greatest run in terms of like pure wrestling match quality this year, but he undeniably is a great champion for them, and the fans will in his matches. I personally, and we talked about it a little bit in the last show, If I'm in charge, there's no way Naito's losing to anybody <laughs> right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we I said think, that, discussed that on the last show too. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's to me, there's just no upside to him losing at this point that you couldn't get from him winning. However, <laughs> it's a guy from AW that they have him against. That is true. Uh, I mean, like I said, and. There's reasons to think that Moxley has a chance to win. I'm not arguing that mm-hmm. at all. I'm just saying I wouldn't. Do that. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I would fight this very hard to be like, look, Naito can't lose. I'm sorry. We'll see. About <laughs> I, I I have a strong feeling that Moxley will win the title. Yeah, and and I wouldn't surprise me to what. Well, I, I mean, you could build something to forbid door, I guess. Uh, yes. If you want, yes, yes. Right there. I think we could talk about it now a little bit, though. Uh, bringing him up. This is kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but I think it's relevant to this. Because a lot of people thought that he would show up here. Considering what happened with Nakajima, mm-hmm. do you think he could be on the radar for New Japan? Did you actually think he would show up here? I didn't, but I, you... I other people told me. Oh, I... They thought, they thought, they thought he would. No, I never a... actually thought about that he would show up here. Do you... Th- you, you so... Akajima being on the radar for New Japan Pro Wrestling. I can see that. Because the way that he left All Japan now seemed, of course, rather rushed. Do they want... And that, that was kind of my... I think that's why a lot of people thought he would show up here. Mm-hmm. Because why did he need to do what he did so soon being rushed and needed here uh, in this circumstance? So it, it made sense when you think about it, actually. It just didn't happen. But usually the April show is a show where they debut new guys. Mm. 
like I said, uh, we when we discussed Nakajima first leaving Pro Wrestling Noah, I do think that New Japan is a viable opportunity for him. And I think we also brought up the point last time, but is the all the Inoki stuff, is that something that holds them back to bringing Nakajima in? Yeah, yeah I, I, I could totally see that throwing Maybe, a wrench into things. I mean, his his All Japan Triple Crown run was was was. A, if you look at just the matches, it was a good run, and he beat a lot of that talent. But if you're New Japan Pro Wrestling, Dylan, yeah, is Katsuhiko Nakajima after his All Japan run suddenly someone that you think, yes, we need this guy right now? I think they absolutely need someone. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> you know, like I said, there's no stars on this roster. Like uh, ultimately, mm-hmm. like out, outside of Naito, and I think that he will 100% end up in New Japan eventually. Uh, do you think? Uh, do you think the perception of him has changed, or is it the same that New Japan probably had half year ago? If anything, he might be viewed as more of a head case. If, if all of this is, yep, yep. A, you know, like, do we want him in the locker room? Could that's be my, a that's my question, yes. Yeah, I could totally see that. And I will talk about that when we get to All Japan. But ultimately, I just think they need some that's why, that's why. That's part of the reason why I think that Moxley is winning the title. Because it gives them some months to figure out what they want to do with the title. They will, of course, if... Moxley wins the title, they will, of course, go back to Naito, but they have a couple of months before Naito gets the title back, then there's the G1 maybe coming, and after that, they're going to have one more title match, and that brings them a lot of time to at least try to build up someone from within. Would Moxley defend the title at Dontaku? Mm, I think he would have to. Yeah, because like then you take out the title. Naito, I think the the Dontaku match that would make sense would be Moxley and Finlay. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, with, oh, no. with, uh, if Tanahashi is back, they could also do Tanahashi and MF on the show. You can never count out Tanahashi <laughs> at this point uh, for being there. Uh, and like you said, I'm, that's another thing talking about this this match with Suji. It's very possible Finley was going to be that that guy. Like if he didn't get it, wasn't out of the tournament. Yeah, very possible. You know? uh, so like it may have been against their their original plans in the first place, and this is kind of their best job. And that again raises the question why, why they didn't go with Yoki Goto, because this was a title match that everybody knew the challenger wasn't winning. And as far as Finley, if they do that. He feels so cold right now. I mean, even on this show, he didn't even and, win his match. <laughs> and that's so wild that he feels cold after that incredible cage match in February. I, I know. I, I told it's, I told you guys after. I remember when he lost to Nimeth. I hate yeah, that. I out mean, of all of that it. was really bad. And the tournament, whatever they were trying to have him lose up and, and fail ahead. Yeah, they, was they, not able they to complete telling that. the story that uh, the the cage match hurt him so much that in the end he lost to Nick Nemeth. It's not convincing. So, so he can't beat Bushi now? now <laughs> he can't in the beat Bushi match? No, no. Yeah, like, that, that's the thing. Like, I think they wanted him to fail up. But the problem is he didn't get to go up because of the injury. <laughs> so now he just failed. And it's too late. Like, you can't go back, which they've done multiple times. Uh, even in October, remember? He lost the Never title to Tonga. And then they tried to have him fail up and get this new title, only to immediately fail again. So it was like really bad booking, and like from a narrative perspective. Like whatever you think of Finley, that's just very poor narrative storytelling uh, from Gato to keep doing that back and forth. And now, just like they have done so many times, they're once again caught with their pants down. They cannot put the toothpaste back in the tube. Finley's where he's at. And there's no real getting around it. Like the only hope for him is that the rest of the roster is so poor that they that he has a chance. If it were any kind of good company at the moment, he would be gone. There's all these rumors flying around about Hinari. Like he posted a thing on Twitter today, uh, saying goodbye Japan. Uh, we'll see what happens with him. The cage match could have been so and much if I, more. If, if I was Hinari, I would be out too. Oh, absolutely. 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I totally have no problem with it. The company's in a really rough place, which kind of plays into my Nakajima point. Mm. To me, they just need to, they just need something at the moment. And to me, he is the best reasonable option for them. Let's look at this Gabe Kid promo. Because he brought up <laughs> it's a lot of issues that New Japan brought up onto themselves. Yeah. Like, okay, when he was in the ring and talking, I gotta say, I didn't really understand any, any of his words. He, of course, he has this thick accent to begin with, but he also was talking in such a high pace that I just couldn't get what he was trying to bring across. I heard some names and I heard some words. Like he said he was going to stab Tanahashi again, which was a great line. Loved it. But he said, uh, part of the promo was, Nick Nemeth and Matt Riddle turn up and we all start wrestling like we're trying to get on main event or superstars. Does the squiggle of the side of this ring say level up? They send Jungle Bitch as a punishment. This is New Japan Pro Wrestling. Tanashi might as well walk into Tony Khan's office, pull his trousers down and say, do your worst. It's a fucking embarrassment. And then he spat on the, on the lion mark, which brought a reaction from the crowd. But everything before that did not because nobody understood a word he was saying. <laughs> yes, and, and regardless of the accent, they still couldn't understand him because this is Japan and not <laughs> England. Yes. <laughs> Ultimately, like, somebody needs to clue these foreigners in on this because I think even since the days of Jay White as a champion doing those promos, <laughs> uh, like people have seemed to have forgotten that this is not America or England or New Zealand. Uh, so I think that they need to clue these guys in on it uh, overall. But yeah, he's a, he's a madman, and he's a madman. Like he's just a raging lunatic cutting his promo. He's used it to make a character out of himself, and some people really like it. Some people really like it <laughs> on there. Um, and like you said, the, the content of it was basically – it's hard to – I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I, It was bad for them to bring in these mid-card guys and push them so hard. Exactly. Like, yes. <laughs> like, and, yes, that's true. And now they have Gabe Kidd coming out, and they are making a story out of it. <laughs> this company sucks. It, exactly, and just like that works so well for WCW, though. And so it strict. also doesn't work for New Japan themselves because they did the same thing with the global title now, and that was also part of the title talk that Yudatsuji brought up. So they introduced this new championship, the global title. And nobody really has any clue why it's called the global title when you have a world title. And they, instead of like cluing everybody in what this title is for, at, at the beginning they said this is going to be a title that's defended internationally. They have an international champion right now and he's not defending the title internationally. So that's not true, obviously. So what's the title? And, and they, they are not telling you what the title is about. Instead, they're putting it into a storyline where Yoda Tsuji and Tetsu Naito also wonder what the title is all about. And it's very similar with this one here. They bring in Nick Nemeth, they bring in Matt Riddle. Their title wins. They totally don't work because the crowd doesn't know who these two people are and they win titles uh, immediately and then leave with belts. Um, and now they are, they are trying to turn this into a story to make you believe that this was part of their plan. But was it really? It was all a part of the master plan, Stringer. You don't understand the vision right now in this company. I obviously don't, no. Well, n n nobody does. So this is the problem, except for... I don't even think the people running this show understand their plan at the moment. Again, it just feels like the stuff with Nimith and Riddle, this feels like a company desperately trying to find something. Like, just grab out whatever we can get. Oh, somebody kind of big got fired from WWE. We have to go for him. Like, we have to bring him in. There's no real thought behind it. They just need something because they know that this company sucks for real right now. And they're just trying to escape it and fight and their way out of it. And kind of what you said earlier about buying time. I think they're doing what they can to not rush Suji and Co. right yeah. now. Yeah. But they kind of don't have At the same time, they know. They have, to, yeah, yeah. they have to. Yeah, exactly. Like, even if they don't want to, they're at a situation now. And it's, against, the... it's not, again, not only against their plans. It's also against what New Japan has been for the last 20, 30 years. They don't rush their guys, usually. 
But they the have problem to. is Okada is not here anymore, mm-hmm. <laughs> and they they all of their stars are gone and, or, or aged out now. So like now they they have to do different things, and instead of doing what I think a lot of us, not just us, but not even really us, but more so a lot of our listeners when we did the prediction show last year, a ton of people predicted either Suji or Umino winning the New Japan Cup and getting a title shot, which did happen with Suji. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was done in a way that I don't think was very satisfying, unfortunately, because of the Moxley situation. But they just have to go with it. And like I said, it just feels like they're scrambling to do different stuff. And I think that that will lead to Nakajima coming in ultimately. Where that goes, is he reliable? All questions that that have yet to be remained. I think, if he's, my... I think if he's brought in, he'll be a surprise announcement for the G1 Climax. I think so, so too. That will make sense. And, uh, I, boy, this G1 this year. <laughs> Look at this <laughs> roster. This is going to be rough, people. <laughs> like that, that, This tournament this year. That, again, they need people. It's not a, a question of do they want. They need. Like They need to take risks. If it means bringing in a lunatic into your locker room that will make everybody mad and do unprofessional things, you have to take the chance at the moment. Now I that pitch, we're, oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. My pitch for him, and I, I give my friend Jesse credit for this, but I love the idea so much I'm going to steal it on this <laughs> show. My pitch for Nakajima <laughs> coming into New Japan, he comes out to... Misawa's theme song, or Jumbo's theme song, or Baba's theme song. He is now the king of King's Road, <laughs> and invading New Japan, the far inferior style of wrestling to Baba's Royal Road style. <laughs> Coming in, he comes out with a robe like the All Japan style. That's what I want to see from Nakajima coming into New Japan. Love it. That would be so funny if that happened. He'll be the king, Katsuhiko Nakajima. Yes, the king of the road. He needs needs a a crown as well. Yes, he will always talk about how he was always a follower of the royal road style of wrestling and never believed in strong style. I've gone from living under the bridge to become the king of the king's road. Oh, that's another thing. We're going to talk about that when we get to All Japan. But anyway, long story short, I think they need something and somebody and probably multiple people, and then they will try their best to find it. Whether Moxley wins the title, totally possible that that happens. I personally think that Naito should be the champion into Wrestle Kingdom, but we'll see if they if they agree. And a lot of times it seems like Gato doesn't agree with the things I say, so we will see uh, if he listens this one time. Now that we briefly touched on the G1 Climax, let's talk about this other tournament that they announced Wrestlers for. It, of course, followed the very unfortunate situation in which Yo, after 90 seconds into the match, dislocated his shoulder and Sho defended the title. I don't personally thought that he would win. Yo, that is. Yeah. So, I don't think that it changed anything regarding the title situation. We have a list of 20 wrestlers that are entering the best of the Zubudina 31. And when they announced the first name, I said, oh, that's who I started with? Ryos Kataguchi was the first one they announced. Then, El Desperado, Kevin Knight, Yo, Hiromo Takashi, Bushi, Titan, TJP, Francesco Akira, Doki, Robbie Eagles, Taiji Shimori, Yoshinobu Konemaru, Sho, Clark Connors, Drilla Maloney, Kose Fujiya, Black Christian, Ninja Mac, and Hayata. That's a lot of names in this tournament, and there's a lot of, uh, once again, there's a lot of junior heavyweights that pretend to be heavyweights in this yep, tournament. Yep, go back to our opening talk about this. Look at this mm-hmm. tournament no further. Yep, yep. yep. And uh, I don't think it's to the benefit of the tournament. <sighs> Nothing is the benefit of this. It's going to be a small man's G1 climax. Um, first of all, get well soon to Yo. Yes. Um, Hopefully he'll be back in time uh, for it. Did they announce what his injury was? It looked like a shoulder injury to yeah, me. Yeah, I, I think it was a dislocated injury, a dislocated shoulder, I think. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, he basically hit a drop kick and ran, landed wrong. Yep. On there, I will have to say that um, Show had some great improv skills. Uh, I'm not normally a fan of. Oh, I'm gonna say also Doki and Kosei Fujita saving the situation was really, really good. Yeah, everybody involved did good, but Show was like kind of hilarious actually because he. <laughs> He grabbed about seller like he acted like he had wrestled a you know an Iron Man match <laughs> and was very tired after this like one minute match. Uh and they somebody said something like, Oh, this is the worst champion in history <laughs> and I was like, Come on, he's not worse than evil <laughs> like on there. Uh but no, uh yeah, Fujita came out, Doki came out, and they had their little promo battle. And like you said, really saved it. And kinda of to your point earlier when I mentioned that maybe they added some time to the main event. They filled time pretty well with all these guys yep. in there, and they set things up really good overall. So, like, hopefully, um, you know, they can bounce back. You look at this lineup, I mean, it's rough. But uh, how about this? Out of all these people, who's missing from this tournament? Kushida, who, who is... What they was hate, that They hate about? this man. They, they hate, hate this, this man. man so much. Yeah, they will never let him leaving down like everything about his run is just revenge against him oh, uh, hilarious yeah it's awful remember we talked about it last year that like oh Kushida one of the favorites like he could have a great run then he was yeah. like last place <laughs> in the tournament but yeah then he lost of course uh, on, on this show but yeah uh, the tournament I mean god if you were to talk about Dylan Fox's least favorite wrestlers Hayata and Blake Christian would be very high up on that list. Like two of the worst wrestlers in the world overall. Like legit. Like not even laughing about it. Uh, I absolutely think they totally dr- like drown whatever block they're in. Like nothing but horrible matches. Can't believe Noah. The funny thing about this. Right now they have Hayata working a heavyweight feud against Jack Morris. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's coming into the junior tournament <laughs> in New Japan. Hey. TJP is in this tournament. Oh yeah, well, that hey, that was a fun month of uh, that, that heavyweight <laughs> run for TJP. Yes. Yeah, yeah, like he went back to the juniors for this match here, and like, well, the thing is though, they just need bodies. Like that's the problem with this roster right now. They just need people in this tournament, and so because, because for the life of them, they insist this tournament will have twenty wrestlers. Yeah, and Kushida will never be one of those twenty men. It ha- they could they would take no, anybody. Need Hayata, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Ninja Mac, a fine addition, uh, very over with Noah. I think he's going to really excite the fans in New Japan. He is like honestly thinking about it in terms of spectacular guys. He's probably one of the top he, ones. He really is. Yes, that's true. And what a depressing WrestleMania weekend he had. I mean, he was yeah. just on two random as Noah shows. In comparison to what he did years ago, he was one of the most over guys on these WrestleMania weekends. Yeah, and I wouldn't put him again. He's a guy like you compare to the DG. I was like Ben K. I think is a better wrestler than him overall, or like Tanaka you were talking about. But he is so much more spectacular than those guys. You and I what? think you you need that. Yeah, I think New Japan is signing him. What, can they sign Hayata? <laughs> Get him out of Noah? <laughs> no, please, please don't. I said, please. <laughs> but no, yeah, Ninja, uh, yeah, I could totally see that. I mean, you know, they've been good about that in, in years press. I mean, look at Akira. He was an all-Japan guy before True. they brought him in when he was getting hot. I think Ninja Mac would be a great signing for them. And he would add a lot different style that I think they need. There's nobody in this tournament that wrestles like he does. Uh, and I think that I highly approve of that. You know, there's nobody who wrestles like Hayata does in this tournament. And, and I think we're all thankful for that, for that uh, overall. But you look at the names here. Who can win this tournament? So I was thinking, Sho is the champion right now. And with Evil losing the Never title and Gabe Kidd coming in, they are kind of transitioning away from House of Torture versus LIJ. So I would rule out Hiromu Takashi this time. He's the one who stood out to me most when I looked at this li- lineup. I mean, sure, yes. Uh, with the Gabe Kid thing, I I can see them putting some steam behind the War Dogs, but I don't see either Driller Maloney or Clark Connors winning this tournament they are yeah. in because they are junior tag champs. So I'm just, just ruling out some guys. Taguchi, of course, is not winning either. Kevin Knight, Yo is still in. Uh, let's see if he makes it. 
Um, Titan is not winning, even though he had a great run last year. So yeah, he did. Yeah, I, why wouldn't write him why, off? Why, why not? Yes, yeah. I mean, Titan could be one of those guys that could be in the conversation. Yeah. Francisco Akira, I think he should be in the conversation yeah. to at least make it to the semifinals if they once again do one. He's another guy, much like a Hinare in Finlay. Uh, he had such a standout performance in the cage, and they haven't capitalized on it at exactly, all. Yes. Uh, and maybe, maybe this will be the time they do. Doki, always a great guy that comes up with six to eight points. Yeah. Robbie Eagles, always a guy that could make it to the semis. He's, they are high on him, usually. I love him as a wrestler. Yeah. <laughs> all the other guys that we have here are bodies for the tournament, I would say. Yeah. Ishimori, they always give a respect to. They give, yeah, and especially because he got hurt last year, I think yeah. he'll have a run. Yeah. But yeah, that's it. So Hiromu, Titan, Francesco Akira, Robbie Eagles, maybe. Yeah, I have to see, I have to see the blocks before I make a full yeah, that's prediction. True. That's true. Uh, do you I would think, love to see Akira win the thing in the end. My fear is that they're, <laughs> they're going to do something with this Universal Japan deal. And give Hayato the win here. <laughs> that's that's my greatest fear because he's so protected in Noah, like yeah. by far their most protected guy. That's true. Would they willingly give this person who they put years and years and years of just torturing me with and always putting over? Would they really have him come in and come again to have three to four wins? In the tournament? counterpoint to that is how is New Japan Pro Wrestling using other Noah guys? in other tournaments, in other situations. They never give Noah respect. Well, the only other one's Kaito, and they don't care about him. That's true. They care about Hayata. <laughs> That's a great point, actually. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but, I mean, they, sure, they could. Like, I mean, uh, if they're just saying, all right, I mean, Hayata... Until, until, until the won. point that they actually push a Noah wrestler in New Japan Pro thing, I will not believe that they do. I hope you're right. In this case, I love that they push Kaito, but I hope you're right about them not pushing Hayata uh, here. But it's my fear because so many times in Noah we go through it that like I just it doesn't make any sense for him to be in these positions, but he always ends up in them. So I will have PTSD from Noah Hayata booking <laughs> until proven otherwise. <laughs> but hopefully you're right. Um, yeah, like I said, I'll see the blocks and we'll we'll have a better prediction yeah. when that happens. So what else? Uh, yeah, the tag team title is back with Bishamon. That's great. The match sucked. Yeah, it couldn't be worse <laughs> than where it um, was. Junior tag title remained with the Bullet Club Warlocks. I actually liked that match a lot. I thought... That was good. It was the best match of the show. Yeah, I think so too. Really great That's stuff. A couple of minutes in. It, it took a little while to get going, but after six to eight minutes, it really picked up steam, and Kevin Knight was a great guy to... Uh, help the others out here in terms of spectacular moves. So that worked out. Akira too. I that thought was... if you noticed, I thought that Knight and Kushida had a great like chemistry with each other. I they thought do. they were kind of like the keys of the match. They did a lot of like Motor City Machine Gun spots too. And yeah, they did, kind... also did the uh, the um, arm lock, the hammer bot lock. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a, like really good match. Like that that match. And obviously, everyone knows like Catch Two Two is like a great team. Uh, that really got the best out of the, the War Dogs as well, being the big guys against these guys. Uh, it really worked out well. And that was a good match. I mean, I, this was, to me, long story short, I don't know if you have anything to say about the undercard, but this was a bad no. show. I, 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 I have one thing to say about the undercard, and that's uh, the prime the prime is only frontier zone match prime that had the two AW guys. And it was really cool to see the two AW guys and also Michelle getting a shout out because of her notes. Yeah. On the two AW guys, we had Ayato Yoshida, Chicharito Shoki, and Takuro Niki in to face Tomohiro Ishii, Toruyano, and Oleg Bolton. And it was interesting. I thought that uh, after the show, backstage, Ayato Yoshida, who had been in New Japan before, said something along the lines to that, to his own fault, he dropped out from his first New Japan run. And now he challenged Tomohiro Ishii. And I also noticed that he once again got... <laughs> proper ring gear and seems motivated so I I wouldn't mind him seeing him again in New Japan 
He's always had the potential. Uh, he went sure. through that weird, like you said, like now that he's got the gear back. I think that's a big upgrade for him. He had that weird uh, run that he's been on lately. Yeah, he he uh, used to be a heel for some time in 2AW2. I think that's uh, that's yeah over as well. Uh, but yeah, love him. I would love to see him and Ish- Ishii. Please give us this. Um, you know where we need that. Uh, Yoshida, if he could come in, I think he'd be a great guy to have. It depends on what. Like, what is the ultimate end game of these Frontier Zone match? Are they recruiting people or just giving people, like... So look? far, there's never been an end game to any of these matches. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But at least you gave us a little hint of something with Ishii here, which is more Sometimes than they'll before. bring in the local guys. Sometimes they'll bring in random guys. It's, it's a mix. These three getting... If this ends with them just having this match, that's a total win for them to perform Absolutely. in the hall. For, yes. for these guys. Uh, so good stuff there. Instead of performing in front of 60 fans, they perform in front of 6,000. 6, <laughs> yes. Uh, so, yes, definitely a big upgrade for them. I uh, also want to shout out uh, Charlton did another good job here. Walker wasn't here for this show. Uh, yeah. But uh, him and uh, Cobb as oh, well. Oh, great chemistry. Yeah, yeah, great commentary team with, with, with Cobb as well. Uh, yeah, shout out to Walker. But you were replaced by a great guy in Cobb, you know, for this show, for this show. Like they found a great fill in. Yeah, Walker, yeah. you need to up your game now. <laughs> hey, I like Walker a lot. I think he's done a great job in yeah, the, in the first few months he's, that he has for sure. Yeah, yeah, I really like his game. Uh, and him and Charlton have good chemistry as well. But Cobb was very good here. He had multiple good comments there. Yeah, uh, e- even he in that lame color guy, even in that lame tag match, uh, Charlton said something like. Man, Kenta's kicks, they look like they hurt. And Cobb was like, ah, you finally noticed that, huh? It was was really good. Uh, Cobb, really good stuff. Really underrated guy, actually, in in New Japan in general. I think he's a guy they could actually do a lot more with if they wanted, but what do I know? (laughs) So they announced the full card for Winnie City Riot. Of course, Naito and Moxley for the... World Heavyweight Championship, then there is a match between Tomohiro Ishii and Nick Nemeth that is not a title match for whatever reason. <laughs> what? It's a special singles match listed on the New Japan website. <sighs> However, Matt Riddle is a, versus Zack Sabre Jr. is a title match for the television title. Then there is uh, the eight-man uh, Riot Rules match with Eddie Kingston, three partners against Gabe Kidd and three partners. Hiromu Takashi versus Mustafa Ali. Shota Umino versus Jack Perry. Then uh, we have, Dylan, I don't know about you, but I am very confused whenever titles are put together and then randomly once again split, like the, this North American Triple Crown in AEW oh, that now yeah. has fallen apart completely. And for whatever reason, when they had the IWGP and Strong Openweight Tag Team title match, I thought, okay, now they, they are merging the titles. That's all good. But now, um, Fantasma and Hikorea are still the uh, Strong Tag Team champions, and they are defending against the team of Fred Rossa and Tom Lawler, then Joel Nelson and Royce Isaacs, and Shane Haste and Mikey Nichols in a four-way match. I mean... This these titles are so prestigious they couldn't get rid of them, you know they they're just too valuable. It's also Stephanie Wakea also has a bunch of titles and one of them is the strong <laughs> women's title. She's defending against Asumi. That should be a great match. Yeah, that has a really high expectations uh, for sure. Uh, I didn't think the Stardom uh, wrestlers really like put their best effort in into WrestleMania weekend either. Uh, in general, but they can get it done. And if Vakera can really bring out her best, uh, this could definitely be something big. What do you think about the floor for the opening match of the show? Minoru uh, Suzuki against low. Renarita. <laughs> yeah. I mean... It's I've so never... funny that this match is following one of the two dark matches. That's Viva Van and Mina Shirakawa against Trish Dora and Alex Windsor. And after that, we're getting Minoru Suzuki and Renarita. Well, at least they made the main card. <laughs> that, that, that's good for them. It's good for them. Yeah, Suzuki. He's pretty rough <laughs> these days. Mm. Narita, also rough, <laughs> I would say. Like I said, I said strong rough style implodes. Oh, I mean, who could forget strong style? The, the legendary <laughs> the faction. New Japan faction. <laughs> yeah, legendary faction. I mean, 
This is going to be epic. This is, uh, uh, yeah. Great. To complete uh, to complete the card, there is a another dark match: Matt Vandergriff against Zayn J. I've never seen either guy, so let's see what they can bring. Yeah, good luck to him. And then there is the card for Taiwan. That's on the 14th. And there is an opening match with two guys from Taiwan. One of them is actually a guy that has been in Japan, touring in Japan before, by the name of Toyo. Um, it's uh, I think it's Battlefish. The the actual uh, Taiwanese translation to it is Battlefish. He's facing a wrestler called X Wang from the Taiwanese Puzzle Promotion. That's I think it's part of this uh, Asian Pacific organization that they found it. Then we have two matches. Well, let me ask you this, though, first. Is uh, Axe Wong any relation to As Wong? I thought, as, I thought so as well. <laughs> I <read him laughs> first, but uh, I don't think they are in any way related. <laughs> Just very similar, I, I, of course. I hope not. I hope not. Good, good luck to those guys. I hope they really yeah. have a great time and show out. Uh, love uh, wrestling in different places. This is something I've really wanted New Japan to do for a long time, is branch out to more of the Asian countries around them. Uh, so the good folks in Taiwan getting a cool show here, and uh, good good luck to Toyo and Axwang. Uh, hopefully they have a great uh, run here. We have two matches for the Never Openweight Six Man Tag Team Title Tournament in the semifinals. The Bebop Team of Tanashi and Toru Yano have picked up Oleg Bolton, and they are facing the natural the... <laughs> third man, of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. To be quite honest, Taguchi would fit this ta- tag team much more than <laughs> Oleg Bolton. Sorry, Oleg. They are facing uh, the United Empire, Gredo Khan, Francesco Akira, and Colm Newman. They are now kind of going into the direction that Jeff Cobb wants to see the group bring results in. He kind of insulted TJP on commentary. Um, they are leading, they're going into a direction with that. We'll see where that goes. Gredo Khan is always losing, even though he's the KOPW champion. Not a great faction right now. No, nah, they've got some good guys, like talent wise. I like. Um, everybody to varying degrees, uh, but yeah, not a great group overall. No. I, I, you think Bebop team wins? Yeah, I think so. Got to give Oleg some shine. Yeah. Second uh, semifinal is Lij versus House of Torture, Bushi Yotatsuji and Shigeru Takagi against Evil Yoshinobu Kanemaru and Show. And then we have, uh, of course, the final of that tournament. Is that happening on the same day? Yeah. It yeah, it's the, is. It's, the main event. It's, it's the main event of the show. Yes, it is. Mm. Oh, Kojima is back. So Toshi Kojima and Tiger Mask against El Desperado and Shoma Kato. Big match for Kato. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's cool. interesting that they... Cool yeah. yeah, Yeah. very cool. Yep. We get Starlight Kid versus Hanako. That's an interesting match as well here with the Stardom uh, representative. They're about to see that power that Hanako brings. <laughs> Yeah. The power, power against speed, and it's nice because like in this formation, uh, they won't probably do a lot of like oh, wait a tie nonsense. It'll just be a straight up match, which I think could be really good if they let Starlight just wrestle. Mm-hmm. Yep. Doki is putting his IWGP Junior Heavyweight Title on the line against Kosei Fujita. The storyline, of course, is that everybody's stealing the belt from Show, and after Yo got injured, I don't think that's that was an impromptu angle that they just did for the sake of doing it. So Doki is now carrying around the Junior Heavyweight title. You're telling me someone stole the title? What an innovative angle. Like, never it's heard of this. Incredible, right? The baby faces yeah. are stealing the titles now in Japan. <laughs> really, really, really innovating things, yeah. Match that looks really good on paper is the match for the IWGP Tag Team title. Bishamon defend against Yui Omura and Sanada. That could, wrestling-wise, be really good. Yeah, we talked about it in the last episode. So Nana's done pretty good uh, this year ever since he lost the title. I think he's stepped his game up a little bit, surprisingly. Yep. And uh, Bishamon, you know that they're great. Uh, big match for Wei Mura here in a, in a nice spot. Hopefully they do good. Yeah, they gave him some wins recently after he lost his hair. But now, Dylan, unfortunately, he's being slotted in the King of Pro Wrestling division with Great Okan. Oh, that means you're probably one of the lowest ranked guys on the roster now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. And he will lose here. <laughs> he will take the fall in this match as well. So who's who's taking the fall in the main event for the Never Open with Six Man Tag Team Title? I honestly think this could go any like any of the four teams could win this. 
Yeah. Like realistically, if you look at it, it's not. I, mean, I rule out the United Empire. Yeah, I mean they've kind of given them a little bit of a store if they want to pl- like pay it off right away here and do something with them, but there's no evidence that they, that they would do no. that. Hey, yeah. true. On the other uh, side of the bracket, it comes down to the question if Lij versus House of Torture really is over or not. Uh, will, will it ever end? Will it end? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I honestly could totally see House of Torture winning this. Why not? I, I think whoever wins this match is gonna beat whoever wins the other match. Like the some of it. Like it'll either be L I J or House of Torture. They get the belts to me. You know what? House of Torture might be the perfect fit for these championships. It's a shame because they spent all this time like trying to make them something with Okada and Tanahashi and, and Ishii like having a good run, but now it's kinda like just back. Like back yeah. back where it was. It's, it's just who else do we have? That's basically this tournament. I wouldn't rule out L.I.J., but I, I could see I could see House of Torture again yeah. as well. Yeah, so that is uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling for now. We also already touched on all Japan Pro Wrestling and the question of Katsuhiko Nakajima, Dylan. Do you really think that we've seen the last of Nakajima in all Japan? So there was a lot of talk about this main event that he had. Mm-hmm. Was it was this all a plan? Was he did he just shoot like go into business for himself, uh, and everything just fell apart for some reason? And my answer to these questions is, who cares? <laughs> it, it sucked. <laughs> like no no matter what the reason it was, this was awful. Like I hated the way he left I, the match. Everything about it, I thought it was like totally damaging. To everything, uh, I hated how he left, and I just hopefully he's gone. Like I think if this is what we yeah. get from him, I yeah. don't think he should be here anymore. They spent a whole week in Tokyo Sports writing articles about how much the match, how much the match sucked, how much Nakajima in all Japan sucked. They had this article where they had Hideki Zuki comment about the title match because they didn't get any comments from Nakajima because he left the building apparently before going to the comments section backstage. They had Ray Saito comment on the title change and he said something along the lines of like, okay, yeah, I mean Anzai, he beat him with a German suplex, so that's that means he's better. So they are trying their best to make this horrible situation work out in a way that Anzai can keep his face and yeah. You've said it before here on this show. For the first title run, you only have one yep. shot. And for whatever reason, I mean, maybe they felt they had to do it here. They felt their back was against the wall, maybe. And so they figured they had to do this here now because the guy was gone. I think... We might have seen the last of Nakajima in All Japan Pro Wrestling, but it's so weird in the way that he left, that he left with all these potential matches being left on the table. The yep. rematch with Yuma, the rematch with Kento, uh, another match with Rei Saito is, uh, would be on the table. Um, so many other things that you could do. The match, another m- run with or against Hokuto Omori, for example, there's so much left on the table. That's why on the last show I said it, they left so much cool stuff lying yeah. around. Then again, I think that they might not have expected him to leave because I don't think there was any way that they would have put Yuma Anzai in this situation if they would have been aware that Nakajima l- would leave the company because that automatically would have meant that Anzai would have to win the title. And I don't think that they wanted this to be the situation in which Anzai won his first title. So there are lots of what-ifs and lots of woods right now. What definitely stands in the end is that Yuma Anzai's first title win at this young age came in a match where he looked like dog shit. And it's such a shame. Like, it's so bad. Like, like it was so bad how it happened. And I just... It and was I was so puzzled that it got so many high ratings on Cage Match. 
I think that the win itself and, and the vibes of the show too. Like they mm-hmm. made they tried their best after the match to make this seem like an epic win. They had everybody put them over at the end. Right, right, right. Yeah, uh, yeah like they tried. And it was good vibes. Like they did do that. Was this match damaging? I always say, I go back to it. Last year with the Nagata match that I loved so much, if he had won that in hindsight, you look at how they told that story in that match. Remember him going for the moonsault. It was awful. But it was it was awful in a way that made perfect sense. Like it, it should have been. And it was because he had to go to a different level that he didn't have because he wasn't good enough. So he had to find something new to make it work. The way they did that story, if he had won then, I thought it, I think it would have been like, and again, hindsight's twenty twenty. Who knows what would have happened a- afterwards? You know, we can't really say. But that was so well done how they told the story there compared to this match, which was Nakajima destroyed him like like it was nothing. Like, he killed him in this match, and Anzai, to his credit, if you just look at this match as a performance, okay, this was really, really executed so well on both sides for what they did. Nakajima punished him and did a great job. Anzai was fantastic. Sell it. I thought he was a great, It was the best part of the match, actually. Yeah, and and he's a phenomenal performer, and he deserved better than, than this. And what you said is so true. And it begs the question, because uh, now Nakajima, we know he's he was not at Sakura Genesis. It's not a sign he wasn't at WrestleMania or whatever anybody else predicted. He's just wherever he is right now. Under the bridge. What? <laughs> yes, they shot, shot the video where he is homeless. Now, apparently, like he, he lives under a bridge. Whatever storyline he's shooting for, or whatever fun he's having, ultimately. <laughs> the question to me is, Why? What made them feel so like strongly, or, or him, if he needed to leave? Why couldn't we have done? What if they had built this up right? What if what could have stopped them from holding out one more time? Just do whatever you got to do this month. Put one more match together with Nakajima after mm-hmm. the carnival. Have Anzai win yeah. the carnival, and that's another problem I don't like about this match. Anzai was not built up well in the months leading up to this match at all compared again to the Nagata match last year, he was losing. He was on a losing tag team with Honda, like in the DDT show earlier in this month, like had not a lot of great momentum. They, why couldn't they have built him up for the carnival and had a normal big match where Anzai finally overcomes the hump. The first red flag is that he was not announced for the carnival. That's... And, I, and I mentioned that on the last yeah. episode. And, yeah. On the last episode, we also began to think about, could it be that Anzai really wins the title? And it didn't r- really make sense that we saw that right here, but it did happen, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I didn't uh, think it was going to happen. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. That, then, like, <sighs> he came in in November, right? The end and of he, October was when he showed up at the end of the Anzai, right. or, uh, Aoyagi and Kento match. Yeah, yeah, he showed up as a freelancer. His first match was in November. Usually freelancers in Japan, they do have some sort of contract with a company they are with, at least if you're a big freelancing guy. Like, for example, when, you know, Ozuki was working all Japan pro wrestling, he had a freelancer contract that said that his dates in the company he has contract with are the most important ones. He had mm-hmm. a similar one with New Japan pro wrestling, I think. So I would think that he probably had some sort of agreement with them. But would that have been a five months agreement? That's that seems rather odd to me, right? That would be from November to the end of March would have been five months. But it could have been a six month agreement. And that would have run out at the end of April. But that also doesn't include the G, the uh, Champion Carnival finals. So in any way, this situation is a really weird one that I failed to pin down because it's so strange and unusual to what I usually know about Japanese promotions and their contract systems. And what it comes down to for me is there must have been some sort of falling out behind the scenes which led to him not being announced for the Champion Carnival and which led to this match being put together in the way that it was in the end. Because as All Japan Pro Wrestling, you wouldn't want your next upcoming star in the 
only one that really is on the level of a new Anza I have win this title in this situation. I'm not saying that the match was a shoot or anything that Nakajima sh did, did did shoot on him. But no, he, no, he, he lost probably he, he probably just used his situation as the veteran guy to tell the youngster this is how we're doing it. And you know, it's clear he's somebody that's that kept in mind that he wanted to protect himself even against Kento. I mean, if he leaves, Kento went 0-2. Like, he went under twice with no hope for revenge yep. anymore. Is that what this was all about? Did Nakajima out Hogan, Kento Hogan, <laughs> once again? <laughs> like, do you think somewhere, like, Nak Kento is like, just like, he wakes up at 3 a.m. and is like, I hate that I think so. so much. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> like, and then, like, somewhere Nakajima's laughing, thinking, like, I can't believe they put me over Kento twice. I, yeah, yeah. That'd be hilarious. But, I mean, look, the, Aoyagi, another one, had a great title reign. Everything was looking great. And then that gets cut off. What's out, What's Yuma do, been doing lately? <laughs> like, the last few months, uh, ever since then. Uh, doing jobs is what he's been doing. Uh, like, uh, the tag league, he, he put over Hokuto Omori, who they immediately said, nah, no push for you. You got a five-minute match with Nakajima now. <laughs> like, th no plans, no ideas. Things flying off the seat of their pants. You know, Nakajima coming in, ending a great title run. Oh, here's this Charlie Dempsey deal. Uh, we're putting the actress girls in here. He's another one for throwing stuff against the wall, trying to get, make everything work. And then, though, I think something that may have been a part of it, again, I don't know this for sure, but the lawsuit, you know, like threat mm. that, that they got, they have been like, well, wait a minute, you told me this and it's not true. I mean, I don't know if that's true or not, but I could yep. see that being an issue if, the, if that did happen. Um, the whole thing, like you said, that's the weird thing about this. Like, this was the most, like, not successful, successful title yeah. of all time. That's, that's why I'm saying it's, it's, it, it totally does not fit what I am used to in Japanese pro wrestling. And if you just look at his shows... All of his title matches and all of the numbers for the shows that he was had, there's no evidence any of this stuff we've talked about it and that's blown up Twitter. There's no evidence that it's hurt them at all. No, nope. <laughs> like you know, like everything they've done, the people they've lost. Uh, they just announced Ayabe signed uh, on on this show as well. Uh, maybe things are cooling down with Ishikawa. Like maybe that's a, another thing that we can look at. Uh, yeah, and uh, also we said it on our last show as well, Takao Omori, after leaving yep. the company, he is just back. And he's also working, he's not in the tournament, but he is working this tour. Yeah, yeah, and I'm signing Ayabe after that. Uh, Omori's back. Maybe there's somebody, maybe there's some people that didn't, weren't big fans of Nakajima. It seems like based on these articles <laughs> that maybe some, a lot of people weren't big fans yeah. of Nakajima. And Aoyagi's comments were very funny, actually, about him. Uh, uh, that he's that he's just a piece of shit who lost yeah. to this uh, unworthy champion. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that, yeah man, man, like they're Ray, killing my guy. <laughs> Ray Saito said something very similar to what you just alluded to. That even though it was a Nakajima was a weird guy to have as a champion, people apparently paid attention to it because it was captivating. Yeah, yeah and that's the thing. Like whatever problems you could point at. At the end of the day, it was successful up and down, and more so than really his Noah title reigns ever were uh, overall. If you look by uh, percentage points, at least on there, like he did a lot of great stuff. It felt like he elevated the company for his matches. It's just there was so much weirdness around him that I think that was off-putting to some fans, but it clearly wasn't to a lot of the local fans, and that they supported the company throughout his reign. So I think we have to give him credit. I just think it would have been so much better if the idea of the match wasn't that bad, but it was literally like 99% of the match he beat him, and then he just won with the, the jumping knee and then the German. Yeah, I was it, so it, confused about this finish, the, the eventual German. That was not the finish. I mean, they could have just gone one more or two more minutes to yeah. make it even into a co proper finishing stretch, but they did not. Yeah, and then he he literally just like walked out of the ring. He just walked away. Yep, he walked away. <laughs> like, yeah, no selling, no 
<laughs> like no put over, no like head nod <laughs> to him, like nothing. Like he just literally walked out, didn't sell anything. I mean, it was like literally two moves, so he didn't even have to sell that much. Yeah, <laughs> but like he just walked away. It was. It reminded me. I remember when and Russell. What I'm about to give y'all a deep cut right now. When Kai beat oh. Hideki Suzuki oh. for the for the Russell yes. One title, he immediately got up as well. Yep. Yeah, exactly. That's what it reminded me of. Yep. On the, on the, and I was just like. And, it's, and the thing is, I loved Kai back then. I thought he was great, like way underrated. It was cool and all. But all Japan has an, a level above Wrestle 1 on the grand total pole of wrestling in, in Japan. You have to show more respect to the Triple Crown, uh, at least. And especially the guy who is so popular as the dude. Like, the, he is the guy, the guy, the rookie that will lead this company and be the next ace. It's all but been... I mean, that's why he won the title so fast. He's been around a year and a half. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that's that's so, it's... Yeah, so rare in wrestling. I think it's uh, unprecedented in Japanese wrestling. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, I mean, you had uh, Nakamura in New Japan had a very yeah. quick, like, fast. Yeah, I was just going to check out how quickly he won the title. Yeah, I think it may have been two years may... for him. Let's but... see. Yeah, let's uh, see. What, what was Nakamura's? Shinsuke Nakamura debuted in... 2002. Oh, they might have been quicker. Yep. He won the title at the end of 2003, I think. Yeah, he beat Tenzan. Move for it. Yeah, see, so that it's not completely unprecedented, but it's very rare. Like, you know, that's that was tw- over 20 years ago yeah. that happened. It yeah. hasn't happened since. So, uh, you know, you you have to show a little bit more respect for that, in my opinion. And again, like maybe, like if he just comes back, I don't want to see people saying. Aha, I told you. I told you it was all a plan. Like, it's perfect. You you got worked. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, it's still bad, like, what happened here. Uh, and if he even comes back, which, I mean, I don't know. Like, you know, maybe he will, maybe he won't. Maybe he will, yeah. Yeah, like, it's not impossible. No. that. Yeah, it's not impossible. They've done a lot of weird stuff in this title right that we, like you said, it's stuff that you don't think about when you look at the normal Japanese landscape. I mean, that's all a part of the plan. They want it to be so crazy and, and unpredictable. Uh, again, look at the president. Nobody thought bringing in actress girls was a good idea. And it's not been. <laughs> but he did it anyway, and he continues to do it, despite evidence to the contrary. Um, you know, so he's doing a lot of different things in all Japan right now. Again, it seems like the leadership just wants to throw a bunch of stuff at the wall. Hopefully this will catch fire. Again, maybe, the, maybe like you said, this was not the original plan for him to lose and just – some falling out happened, and they just got put up against the wall for reasons we don't know. Again, there's no reason that we can understand right now. We don't know what's next for Nakajima. But I just I hated the way it ended for Anzai's first title reign, which I think you could have gotten. If they had just done it again, even if the contract was only for a few months, they should have worked something out to have just one more match <laughs> like in May. If you're not mm. going anywhere... Just give us until May. We will put him in there. We will build him up and make him the champion that we need, which didn't happen here. Well, again, maybe by the time he's in a different company. Who knows? That's true. I mean, we still got over a month before that happens. Maybe he said, look, at the end of April. I mean, I don't know how that could work. You know, I mean, I guess unless he does go to America, and AEW or WWE signs him, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? I just yeah. said that Tako Mori was working the two. He actually is only working one match, I so he's working the Giant Baba Death Memorial 25th Anniversary six man Tag Match on May 4. That is Kento Miyahara, Rena Yabe, and Masao Inoue against Yuma Aoyagi, Takao Omori, and Davey Boy Smith Jr. A um, couple of more notes on these other cards. They announced they have a All Japan Legends versus All Japan Super New Era match, Dylan and the All Japan Legends team is Zuwama, Kasayashi, and Masayuki Kono. Oh, I mean, they face Dead Tabura, Hokoto, Obori, and Rena Yabe. <laughs> I mean, those are those are my legends. Yes. <laughs> trigger. Hey, Kono, former uh, Wrestle One champion in his own right. Uh, oh yeah, well. Wrestle One baby. Yeah, like Kazuma, Wrestle One former Wrestle One champion. Look at look at all the Wrestle One lore that we we get voted out here. Uh. What I noted is, 
I said it on the last show that Seiko Tachibana has never really worked with the juniors, but he is actually in some of the matches here with Dan Tamura, with Ryo Inoue and Musashi. Then on the second to last show of the tournament on May 6th, he is in the in an eight-man tag, Ryzen Hayato, Hikaru Sato, Dentamura, and Ryo Inoue against Kasa Yashi, Musashi, Seiko, Tachibana, and Seki Yoshioka. So he is kind of working with the junior heavyweights now, even though he is the Gaora TV Openweight Champion, whatever that means. <laughs> the legendary uh, title. The legendary titles. And then there is one match that's very special to you, Dylan, also <laughs> on this May 6th card. It is Yuma Anzai, Ryukyu Honda, Jun and Ray Saito against Zuwama, Hideki Suzuki, Hartler Jackson and Lord Crew. The Zuwama and Hideki Suzuki team must continue. Hopefully they have a falling out after this <laughs> Jet Champion Carnival. Again? <laughs> yeah, we need it again. I mean, yeah, we thought it was over with uh, multiple times now, but. Yeah. Yeah, they lost the titles now. They, they shot an angle in which Taro said that the voodoo murderers are gone and I was so happy. Yay! It's over. That was great. Yeah, that was the best part about the show. It was Lemza in ring, actually. It was yep. just get rid of Onita, get rid of, uh, <laughs> yes. you know, uh, Voodoo Murders, Taru, Nakajima's out. He's a, a nutcase. Like, we're getting rid of all these guys and a new era. Like, they totally got that point across they did. on that show, even though I didn't think it was a great show of wrestling, ultimately. No, no. Yeah, now that we're in a new situation with a new champion, Dylan, would you have the champion win uh, the champion carnival? I proposed that on my Patreon review of that show, actually. I think I thought he has was, to. I think that's the most interesting, like especially after what happened. I think that's the best way you could fix what <laughs> this mess you yes. have created yourself is to have to go. It, it ideally would have been he wins the carnival and then the title. Mm-hmm. But if you do it in reverse, it's p- kind of interesting, at least. And I think that, that you could get this title reign off to a good start if you rebuild him very fast. I, I, you know, It's tough, too, because when you do it that fast, you've won the belt, and you've won the carnival, and you've won the carnival with the belt at the same time. It's like, where do you go? Like, you, know, you don't really have any mountains to climb anymore, so they need to work on that, too. They need to establish somebody that can be his mountain, which, I mean, obviously would be Kento, I think, would be be that, but... When I saw this block, and I figured that Anzai might be winning the title, I was looking at some of the bigger guys in this block that could actually defeat Anzai, and it it would always be like a no-brainer to do Anzai and Zuwama for the title, for example. I still think Anzai could drop one fall in this block, and then still march on to win the tournament to then defend the title against the one guy that he beat in this tournament. I wouldn't, I don't think Anzai is in the position right now that he could afford two more losses. I mean, I said, I said two more, even though he beat Nakajima, but to be honest, like he looked yeah. like the loser in that match. Yeah. So I don't think right now Anzai could afford any loss. So if it was me, I would, have the guy just run with the ball and win the entire tournament without a defeat. I think that I've always been consistent that I favor strong champions. Like, when you're at the top of the card, I think that's the best way. It's always been the best way, actually, like for 20 years, uh, even longer, 30, 40, 50 years of Japanese wrestling. So I totally approve of that idea, actually. I think the problem is we kind of talked about it in the last episode. The block he's in kind of does a disservice to his actual talents like yeah, yeah because it's like it's all big guys and then him kind of is, is, is the block he's in so he's like by just nature he's going to have to be the underdog in a lot of these matches which doesn't fit his profile as the champion now as well i really think he should have been in the other block uh, i think they would have been smart if they like switch him and kento actually like would be what i would have done uh, you know, have Kento face all the big guys. That's what he's always known for anyway. Uh, and you keep them apart, but you give Anzai guys he could beat. Here, we thought when we looked at it, remember the last match of his in his block play is Hideki. And I thought that would be his win to knock Hideki out of the final. Uh, you know, I think we both kind of talked about that, that, you know, that would move Suwama. And it was kind of where we looked at it originally. But now as the champion, like you said, he 
he can't lose that much. Like, he, you have to protect him. So I think the best way they could go about it, the thing is, I said Kento, but, like, let's say he goes undefeated in his block. Maybe you throw in a couple of draws, you politic people, whatever. Like, you know, you, you know, you keep him safe. He moves to the final. You could have him lose the final to somebody, but you have to have him get his win back. Yeah. You know, afterwards. Like that, I think that might be how I would play it. Somebody like an Aoyagi who needs to get rebuilt after the last few months. It would uh, actually be a good way to go about it as well. Yeah, maybe you have him draw with Suwama and Hideki and win yeah. everything else. And then he drops the final to Aoyagi, and then Anzai beats Aoyagi uh, at the, you know, whenever they do the title match. In mm-hmm. June or whatever. Yeah, make, yeah, it could also make sense, yeah. Yeah, that's what I would do. But I also like your idea of just him winning as well, because I think he needs it. Now, like, as the champion, he needs that boost up. Um, although, again, I feel like he had a lot more to him last year, like, built into it, like, built up into it. Now we've seen him in a year. He's taken a lot of losses recently, and even his win, like you said, felt more like a loss, ultimately. Uh, so they're going to have to work extra hard, and uh, hopefully he can get it. I love his talent so much. I think he's one of the most underrated players uh, in Japan. Even at his young age, I think he's one of the best wrestlers overall in Japan. And that match, we, we talked about it, his actual performance was excellent. There, mm-hmm. there was nothing wrong with how he wrestled. But they just haven't really utilized him to the best of his abilities, and now they have a chance to. So I will want to wait and see how this tournament plays out. I actually think it makes it more interesting, to be honest with you, uh, that he's the champion. I think there's more paths you could go because before it felt so cut and dry that Suwama, you know, it would come down to Suwama and Kento and, who, you know, whichever guy would beat Nakajima. Now with this, I think that there are different options that you could have. So I do think that's a good thing. And I think it's interesting to see how he goes. And I, I'm looking forward to it, honestly, even though everything's so wonky right now. I wasn't a big fan of that show that he he won the title on. But I do think there's a lot of hope and good things if they play their cards right that this could turn into something big for them. Like I said on the last show, they definitely have a shot with this tournament coming up. Yeah. 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 So, uh, final topic for today, Dylan, Pro Wrestling Noah. We actually rarely talk about Noah on this show. Hey, I think... before we get to Noah, did you have any thoughts on the, the junior match with Musashi? And, and... Oh, yes. Oh, that's right. I was I was about to ask you as well because it was kind of underwhelming to me. I thought so, too. Like, I had so high expectations for it. And it was good, but it was, to me, this match wasn't significantly better than what Dan was doing as no. champion, which we talked about that, like, hey, he he could step up. Like, this is the time to elevate. And uh, this match with Musashi was also a big deal with Musashi. I don't think they really got there to where no, I wanted them to no, be. No. But it was it was fine, but, but it, it wasn't great. That's, the All Japan Junior title also always has a certain flaw to it, to all the matches. And they or rarely... A yeah, a ceiling. <laughs> they, yeah. Rarely, they rarely exceed to a level that you would really think, oh yeah, that's a great junior match. It's always between... It's all, it's usually a seven out of ten match. Yeah, exactly. Like that's like the average, and that's what this was to me. Like yeah, I was. would give it like a soft wreck. I wouldn't say no, I don't watch it. I think if you watch it, you'll like it well enough. But it wasn't like oh, you have to watch this. This yeah. is a crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's not like that. Musashi in the junior division has been a game changer of sorts. Uh, but I mean, he adds depth to the division, and that's what it needed the most, actually. And uh, they also have Kazayashi for this tour back, and Seki Yoshioka is in, so depth is there, definitely. But the quality, it, it's fine. And the thing is, Musashi is somebody I've always been a fan of and wanted to see him get a bigger spot. Yeah. And it's not like he's done bad. No, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, you, in my mind, I always thought higher of him. Like, like okay, let's see him, yeah. The guy I'd like to see, you just mentioned him, I would love to see Yoshioka get a shot. Uh even in these undercard tags, again, he has such a unique style in the ring, not just not just how he wrestles in terms of moves, but even the way he moves around the ring is very unique to me. Uh, I think he's got a very unique style. I love his wrestling, and I'd love to see what he, he can do. He stands out, definitely. Yeah, and I like the idea of the Hayashi stuff that they're doing, too. I think that's oh, pretty yeah. cool. That's good. I definitely think that's going to happen on the Champion Carnival Final on yeah. May 12th. So that would be a big win for Rising Ayato against Kazayashi, legend yeah, of the company. And he's not a bad worker. Like even at this point, Hayashi's still nice. 
had a good tag team title match with uh, with Shima. Yeah. Against uh, was it uh, Kumarashi and Quiet Storm on the show yep, that that's we right. just talked about? Yep. Good, yeah, good yeah. stuff there. And um, yeah, I, I think I think Seki Yoshioka might be the next guy for for Horizon Hayato after Kasayashi would make sense with the Greater Alliance. Yeah, and, I, and we have I think we have lower expectations for this uh, Hayashi match too. Uh, I don't think we're expecting it to be a great match like with Musashi. Uh, so if it's a seven out of ten for that, then I think you've got a job well done. Oh yeah. Uh, we're pretty much. I would love to see, since he is kind of on his final run, I would love to see Team 246 get an all-Asia shot. Like, I, I think I would have preferred that to the, the single title shot. Have him and Kondo go after Dan and Sato. Uh, you know, I think that would have been cool, because I always associate them so much with each other. I hope we see a big, like, last reunion with them. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah, that is all Japan Pro Wrestling then. Yeah, I just wanted to bring that up before we get Yeah, there. sure. Sure, sure. Good yeah. stuff. Yeah. First thing now, final topic. We had two shows back to back. First, it was the Star Navigation uh, from Kirken Hall on the 31st of May. And then we had the return of Monday Magic on April 1st. And I thought both shows really were good. I thought the first three matches on this Noah card, and I usually am not high on Noah undercards, but they had Masaki Tamiya and Shui Taniguchi in the opener really rock with some big blows there, these two guys. Then we had Goshi Ozaki and Zoshi Kotoge against Takashi Sugiura and Hajime Ohara, and I also thought that match was really good. Anthony Green showed up against Daiki Inaba. Good match there as well. Then we, of course, had the usual Stinger versus Noah Jr.'s match in the sixth man. But then we returned to great action with Kaito Kimiya and Roy Oiwa against Keno and Yu Owada. And I also, I don't know, I'm really high on this Ulka Zazaki guy. Me too. Yeah, I think I, he's I, I really great. Like yeah. I mean, he's been wrestling for how long? He's debuted in January, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know, in, in November, just... November last yeah. year. Yep. Uh, and I think he picked it up so well. He was in the tag league with Takashi Sugiura, and of course, he's always working alongside guys. Um, his last matches were with Keno, Naomichi Fuji, and Kaito Kiyomiya. But I really think that he's picking up it, the wrestling really well. He's He knows what he's doing inside the ring. And we've seen it from other mixed martial artists. The transition is not easy. And it can be really rough. But this guy moves around so smoothly. And he has a great ground game already. He's definitely going to be up there for my, for my rookies of the half year. Absolutely. Hopefully he continues uh, throughout the year. Yeah, I really like him. I think that he's done a lot of great work. I was a little wondering, I was wondering a little bit about how they were using him. Like maybe they wanted to accelerate him a little bit, but they've actually kind of toned him back uh, recently as well to, I think, a more healthy pace for him to where now when he gets to the the end one, he won't need to be like one of the top guys. They can really advance him more naturally. And I think that's really benefited him. And in terms of his talent level, it's obvious this is a guy who was a fan of wrestling beforehand. Like, you could tell he's not just doing this to, to goof around or for a paycheck. Uh, he wants to be good at it. Uh, and I really I really like his style and everything he brings to the table. He's a guy I definitely like to see against more people. Uh, I wish that if Hideki was still in Noah, I think he oh. would be a great oh, opponent yeah. for, for him. Right. Uh, but they still got some guys that I think could do some – you could do some great things with. And they've been creative with him, too, even when he's facing bigger guys, uh, you know, like our big names on the roster. They always keep him, like, in a good place. You know, he's wrestling good guys. And when he faced, like, Owada, the young lion, uh, young tiger, he beat him uh, overall. So I like that. Uh, Sugera, obviously a great mentor for him. Uh, the tag league was all good. I don't think they were really put in position to have great tag matches up and down, any of the teams really in, in the tag league, not just them. But I think him on the singles matches has done great every time, and I really like what he brings yes. to the table. And they're continuing the story that he's losing to pinning holes, where yeah. he's just not not as good as a Marufuji, for example, right now. And that's that's a good story. Yeah, Marufuji broke out the perfect cradle there to yep. beat him. Uh, that was really cool. Yep. So, semi-main of the show, Alpha Wolf, Dragon Bane, and Hayata defeated the good-looking guys. That was okay. But what do you think about the main event? El Hiole, Dr. Wagner Jr. in his first title defense against Jake Lee. 
first of all, I wanted to say a couple of matches to spotlight on the undercard. Um, sure, sure, sure. The Kodage and Shiozaki Ohara Sugera match was awesome. Like, I thought that was so good. And the ending with the headbutt, the blood <laughs> coming down, the visual at the end. I was like, this is my wrestling. Like, Kodage, Kodage, Kodage like, he punked him all. Oh, that yeah. was so great. Yeah, like he like this is my wrestling. Kota Gay is back. This is the one I love. Like this is the one from from uh, Noah the Reborn. He's back, and uh, I loved what he's done. His whole run since he's become the heavyweight uh, has been like really strong. I think like out of all the teams in the tag league, I thought they were the best one. Uh, Go continues to be like he's obviously hurt and up there in age. I think this team helps him a lot as well. Uh, be, being in this tag team, I love their chemistry together. The others were great. This was a really strong undercard match. Uh, yeah. There, I, I thought that was like really good, and also another great match. One of the, one, really yeah. one of the better undercards in Japanese wrestling in the last couple of years, actually. Yeah, when you look at it up and down, yeah, this whole card was strong. It's very rare, not just for Noah, but like any other company you can point to. Uh, every match felt like it had some kind of purpose as well, uh, leading into it. Um, the other match I want to spotlight is the the Kaito and Oiwa versus Keno and Owada. Uh, Ken Onawada was the other best team in the tournament. Every match, they've got something with this guy. Like, Owada, actually, when I watch him, he actually reminds me of Kotage when he came in. I, like, first got into uh, Noah from Opro. Um, he just has something with the fans that you can't quite teach. Uh, in every match he's in, <laughs> like, such a natural underdog baby face. And I think that we haven't seen it. Even Kaito, when he was, like, so exceptionally talented as a rookie, I don't think he quite had the grasp of the fans the way Awada does. And uh, teaming with Keno obviously helps that as well. I was so impressed. Like, yeah, uh, Kaito and Keno were really great, like building up their one last match they're building up. I think that's a cool story. Um, who knows how legit that will be. It probably won't be their actual last match. <laughs> but it's a cool that's story. That's April 11, I think. Yeah, yeah, coming up in just a few days. Yes. Uh, so g- cool stuff there. And they had great fire in the match. Like, Kaito's really... Wrestling Keno brings a fire out of him that I think is very <laughs> necessary. Um, I love what Keno is doing on social media, posting all these pictures of baby Kaito. He has this framed <laughs> picture of baby Kaito Kiyomi <laughs> in, in his role as the Noah Rukio. It's so, it's so funny. Yeah, it's really great. Keno, <laughs> like a natural antagonist in this rivalry. But in the match itself, I was actually more impressed by Oiwa and Awada. I thought both Oiwa guys had... Oh yeah, Oi was got it. Like, and this is kind of my issue with this team. He's like too good because he's like <laughs> up there with Kaito, if not overshadowing him so- somewhat. Uh, just in terms of his presence. Like again, he has a presence that you can't teach. Uh, he's just got it. Like inside of him, I don't know why, but he just has it. And I love their work together. Oi won a lot of hand and glove fit uh, as a team. Uh, I thought that match was really strong as well. Uh, we talked about Olka. And you don't care about the semi-main. A uh, really stupid finish with Hayata. Uh, why are they building him in Jack Morris? Does it match? <laughs> don't don't it's understand. their guy. Yeah, because Hayata is the one man. I think he's going to win. I think he's going to win this damn title. He is going to win the title and bring <laughs> the... the uh, what's, the, what's the title's name? Uh, the but the uh, national title. The national title. He's going to be walking in as the national champion to the best of the Super Junior. Well, look, Morris has to lose one of these belts, like either the tag title yeah, or the national title. He just title. defended the tag team title. Mm-hmm. They had two shows over the weekend, which are on demand, so they haven't been published yet on Wrestle Universe. And on one of these in Osaka, they did the tag team title match that had to be had to be postponed due to Kaito's concussion, I think it was. Yeah, and TLG defended. Yeah. He's losing this. Hayata is getting that belt, man. I'm telling you. He, he, he may just win that damn tournament on top of it as the champion. <laughs> I hate this world that we live in. <laughs> Why is Hayata a main eventer? I'm just, Why does I'm it just, make looking, any, I'm just looking in the mirror, Dylan, and I'm seeing myself from a couple of years ago fearing that Keiji Muto is winning it all in Pro Wrestling Noah, and eventually he did. And that was not good, though. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't want... <laughs> And, and at least he was a, a legend. It's like the first a legend. time ever that someone has compared Hayata to Keiji yeah. Muto. Yeah, at least he was a, one of the all-time legends. Hayata is not a legend. And, and who's mine? Not mine. And I don't know who, but not me. Don't, don't mess with me now with Hayata. I don't want to deal with you. Please leave this industry, Hayata, wherever you are. 
But uh, regardless, main event. I thought this came across a lot better than uh, Wagner's match versus Keno, actually. Another thing that I liked about this show, and it started, from again, from the very beginning, uh, especially when that Kota Gay match with the headbutt and everything, this crowd was here for it. Like, a lot of these Noah shows are dead crowds, up and down, like, nothing going on. Like, you know, it's a really hard feeling. Here, you had over 1,300 fans in Corkin. They did a good number. They wanted to see what was going on with the Noah wrestlers, and I think that helped everybody perform at a greater level. This match was a bit long, and it did mm-hmm. drag a little bit at points, to be honest with you. The problem is that neither of these guys, and there's been various points, too, where we talk about it in any company, like even Tokyo Joji Pro all the way up to here. Some people are great in a lot of ways, but to have a main event match such as this, a 30-minute match almost, I think somebody like Wagner and Jake, to a lesser extent, their move set needs to imp- increase a little bit. I don't think there's enough tricks in Wagner's toolbox to have this kind of match specifically and like fill it out to have a great, great match. But he's so charismatic and strong in other ways that he's able to make it work, more or less, even though he doesn't have enough to, to fill out this time. And Jake is another one. When he's working on top, a lot of his offense is kind of basic. To yeah. be honest, I think that they Lots can both use knee strikes, big boots. Yeah, and he does them well. He executes them fine. Mm-hmm. But I do think he could, for a match like this, if it just was a, like a mid card match, if they cut this in half for a mid card match, I think it would be really strong because they could fill out the time better. In a match like this, I think they should work on adding some new moves to their repertoire, especially as the champion, because he's got everything it takes otherwise when you look at him. Uh, again, his charisma could carry you through so much, even if you don't have enough to make it a great match. The crowd was into it. They were very invested. And when they turned it up at the end in the final stretch, and that's how a lot of guys wrestle nowadays in Japan, the crowd was with them and they were able to make it great, even though most of the match was either a good or kind of a drag at points. But by the end, it got great. So I think the rating on the cage match is very fair. I couldn't agree more on the match and I think what you said about the charisma definitely is a thing. Wagner is really over with his uh, turning around the head kind of shtick that he has that's that's really over that um, that wins over the crowd for some portion of the match but overall they I don't know if they necessarily need more moves with a Z that is of course they Both of these guys need to figure out how to string their stuff together so that they can really work out the time that they get. I think Jake did a pretty good job, if you remember. Uh, To his credit, actually, like he listened to me before I even said it, he actually started off with a Hurricane Rana in this match uh, very early on. Mm -hmm. So he did add something, at least. That's true. Uh I just think they're two basic uh, wrestlers overall. For the, again, for this style of match, if it were a shorter match, I think they could do it. Yeah. I think they need some big moves, especially when you get into the big, you know, because the closing stretches are trying to make, like, unload everything, like, get all your big moves in. Uh, I think that they could use some more intermediate moves that, you know, to the move set that could really carry a lot of the undercard time rather than just punches, kicks, and some holds, like rest holds which I think both of these guys are pretty guilty of overall. But they're, I like them both overall. Uh, they did this little segment where they took each other's moves as well, which was good, uh, I thought. Uh, I think that uh, Jake did pretty good here as well. Uh, again, I know a lot of people, he's kind of a controversial guy. But uh, in terms of just his wrestling and his execution, I think he's really good, actually. Uh, I just wish that he had more excitement to his arsenal that could make his matches better for when they're this long. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with that. Yeah, so that was a really good show. And um, the final topic, oh, yeah, we are still on the, <laughs> on the final topic with uh, Noah. Noah, and that's part of the topic, uh, but it also is kind of its own topic. On the Monday Magic Show on uh, April the 1st, it was, was a pretty good show. I liked it. Uh, the main event was Skyto Kumi and Ulka Sasaki, good match. I like that. It was announced that Julia will be wrestling on the Wrestle Magic Sumo Hall show. And when that show was announced, Dylan, we figured what could they possibly have in store for this show to draw a crowd. And well, they have Julia now. And I'm trying they to They have figure... Yankee Tukaju. Is they, that a big draw? 
No, they actually already did their match on today's oh. <laughs> Wrestle <laughs> Magic show because they had another one in a Shinjuku phase and the main event was the GHC Junior title match and UA and Tadasuke defeated Yuko Miyamoto and Isami Kodaka. So that's not uh, going to happen. What they had too on this show today on the on the 8th uh, was Kaito Kiyomiya, Roy Oiwa and Masaki Tamiya versus uh, Elio and Dr. Wagner Jr., Takashi Sugiura and Katsunari Murakami. That sounds wild. <laughs> sounds like Monday magic. <laughs> yes, it's Monday magic, man. So yeah, Julia coming out to Monday Magic and being on Wrestle Magic. And I'm trying to figure out when did they actually announce this uh, Wrestle Magic show? It was late last year, wasn't it? I don't know, Striga. I wasn't paying I don't pay attention to Monday Magic. I'm trying to figure out when they announced Wrestle Magic. Because But I will I'm, now. Because I am I'm thinking about if they announced this show and already knew that they had Julia. Yeah, I get where you're coming from. Because I mean, maybe, she, maybe. she gave her notice apparently late last year. I'm trying for me, but I can't figure out for the life of me Utami. when they announced that show. Yeah. Oh, it was Otami. Oh, right. Yeah, she said she announced it at the, the December. Or mm -hmm. she let them know she didn't announce it. But mm -hmm. Julia, who knows? Maybe she did, too. She probably did. Maybe, maybe <laughs> she did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Like, would you build a whole show, like a major show like that? I mean, Nosawa has done crazier things, for example, like propose to <laughs> Julia inside the ring. Well, nothing he's done has been crazier <laughs> than that. Uh, but it's not crazy. Like, like, this is his chance, ultimately. Like, you know, like this is it. <laughs> uh, she did do an interview one time where she said that she liked, like, she they asked about her ideal boyfriend, and she said she wanted someone older, I, I believe, in that interview. Mm -hmm. So. Uh -huh. He clearly, he clearly is a scout. <laughs> I know what you're doing, Nosawa. You can't fool me. No, come on. I know what you're up to. But thankfully, Julia came to her senses on that and then realized no. Um, but regardless, uh, yeah, putting her on the show, uh, she's great. I love her. I said it when we talked – again, we kind of did a segment last episode about – um When they said everybody was leaving stardom, or not everybody, right. but the five, the five people that left, <laughs> anyway, and she, she was one of them. They've really hurt her, like, the last year. Like, ever since she lost the title, she doesn't really come across like that much of a star, actually, like, in stardom. Like, pretty much for the whole year, nor has she been that important to the company. So, I don't know if I'd be willing to bank... Like, if it were when she, you know, after she beat Shuri, if this show got announced. Like, yeah, I'd totally be all in on her going for a big moment. Right now, I don't know. I don't think it's a good move, to be honest, especially not for a Noah, of all, of all people, uh, to do it like a men's company. Mm -hmm. I will say this. Their women's forays have been met much better <laughs> than the actress time. And all, it, all the fans. Yes, yes. Yeah, like the fans are open to them, like in, in Noah, at least. I mean, they actually have a story going on, at least, with the uh, yeah. great, great uh, what's it called? The Great Sayakasa? Uh, great Sakuya. Sakuya, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, the, another thing about that All Japan show. I felt so bad for the actress time, girls. I don't know if you watched it. Because <laughs> I, I, I a lot of people I talked to say, no, I don't even watch that. <laughs> um, that match was not that bad. Like, the first few matches they had were terrible. But that match was not that bad. But the crowd... <laughs> They hate these women. Like they, they, they no reaction. It was like DIY at WrestleMania level of. Yeah, they they zoned <laughs> out and they yeah. they just see them. They as actively this, rejected it. Like, they, they, they just see it as the side act that the president brought in that nobody likes. And I felt bad for them yeah. because they tried. Like and, and the crowd, like they hate them. Like they, it was. It wasn't even like they zoned out. They actively rejected it to the point where they they were purposely not making noise for it, and it was very sad. In my opinion, that they actually worked hard enough to deserve better. But regardless, the Noah fans aren't as hard, and uh, they respect the, the women they brought in pretty mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan of Great uh, Sakuya, but it's it's something at least. Like you said, yeah. maybe they could build something out of it. You could always bring in a Muto, like you know, relation you have to bring into it. But they've used a lot of good talent on their shows. I mean, e even on this latest M Monday Magic show, you had like Takase on there, who's a great wrestler. Yep. Um, like you said, no, Ozaki was there. Yeah, she's a, a great veteran, uh, respected uh, in the, in the business as well. So 
you know, they're bringing in good workers. Uh, they've had people on different shows for it. So I think putting Julia in a spot like this is really cool. Cause I mean, I'm a big fan of Julia's talent, like just her wrestling. I think she's really good. Any, anybody who headbutts very hard will always win my heart. Mm-hmm. It's like we mentioned it with Kota Gay earlier. She is of a similar vein. Hit very hard is, is her, her favorite style of wrestling. So I like that. I don't know if a gimmick match with Sakuya is the right way to use her, but <laughs> certainly not. No. But I mean, this is no, look who we're talking about. Like this is no <laughs> yeah, it's so gross, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, again, I wouldn't build a show around this, though. To, to be honest, no, I don't think she's at that level of stardom. No pun intended uh, anymore. Mm. Sadly, hey, lost some. Saw that. On that topic. I just uh, saw a picture on Twitter that showed Julia with Rossi Ogawa and also Simon Inoki walking <laughs> around in the background of that picture. Nakajima coming to Monday Magic <laughs> soon. <laughs> Maybe coming to WWE. No, and WWE as well. And they're all a part of the same conglomerate as well. Monday yeah, Magic. Yeah. Not know itself, just Monday Magic. It's that's a amazing. WWE show now. Uh, uh, there. But yeah, that's, I remember thinking as soon as he rolled out of the ring and walked away, my immediate thought was, ah, another bridge burned for, for, for Nakajima. <laughs> no. And I mean, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's just my immediate reaction. Maybe Simon's up to something. That guy's always poking around. I can't believe we're still talking about him in 2024. It's crazy. But what do you, what do you think about, uh, I mean, Julia was shown on NXT. But she's very confused. She, very confused <laughs> on NXT, but she said she was going to do Rossi's project first. So, oh, okay. We all kind of figured that. We all I, figured I, that. Yeah. I mean, she said that a couple of weeks ago, and now she's yeah. announced for this May show of Monday Mad uh, of uh, Wrestle Magic. So she'll probably be around in Japan for some time before she goes over to NXT, I guess. Yeah, like I said. I think we all kind of figured that's what was going to happen uh, overall. They're setting some stuff up uh, with o- Ogawa's company. Uh, that should be all. We should have a great, clearer vision uh, next month for all of right. that. And uh, I, mean, I, I brought it up last time when we talked about it that I was thinking that Wrestle Universe could be a landing point for his project. Yeah, a lot of stuff I've heard points to that being a, a pretty strong possibility, actually. Uh, you know, so... If that were to happen again, it's not been announced. I mean, again, it could be everyone involved could be right now saying, yep, it's a done deal for sure. And then one month from now, they're saying, oh, hell no. Like, I know, I, you know, I never said that. Uh, I, I've always been told in Japanese business, from like people in Japan, like natives, when we, I've talked about this, I've heard a, an analogy that was like, in Japanese business, uh, Maybe means never, and yes means maybe. <laughs> so like, it's never no. Like, it's, it's, everything's yes. Uh, and in wrestling, that's probably triple true, because, you know, even anywhere in the world, wrestling, there's never a no, but there's never a yes either. So, you know, I mean, this project, this Rossi project, they have less people than they thought they would have. And we've yeah. talked about that as well. Yep, yep. And aligning with Wrestle Universe is a smart way to go, because there is a pool of women in this conglomerate that you can use, um, both signed to TJPW or Ganbare Pro or being freelancers like Miyuki Watase or Nagisa Noisaki they use. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, I basically heard it that they've got the girls they've got from Sardom. I'm sure, and it's not just I heard, I, I would predict this anyway. I'm sure they're probably going to try to formulate some kind of dojo strategy. That's similar to what happened with Arceon and JD Star, which was his other companies. He's done similar stuff in the past when he's broken off uh, pretty much at Stardom itself, even when he, when he was started that. Uh, they'll probably have a dojo, get some new wrestlers coming in, new girls to come in to wrestle for him. There's obviously going to be some freelance talent that's going to be brought in. There's going to be some foreign talent. We know how much he loves bringing in the foreigners uh, to Stardom. Even look at the early days, 10 years ago. They had a ton of people... That maybe weren't big stars at the time, but they were brought in to be good wrestlers. You know, uh, you would know in Germany, Alpha Female was a big part of stardom yeah. uh, in the early going. Uh, you had all kinds of people there. Chris Wolf was a big person back then. 
Uh, you know, a lot of foreigners come in, so he's probably going to try and pull that out. Maybe reach out to some old people, like old talents from Stardom, try to come in. I could oh. definitely see it. I have some, I have some names in mind uh, for that. To be honest with you, uh, that I think he will reach out for. I don't know it for sure, but I have speculation that I think he will, and we'll see if that happens. So when you think at all of these things together, he'll be able to have enough people to run shows much like stardom was, but ultimately he wasn't able to get the stars, everyone that he wanted. Of course, working with wrestle universe, that is automatically a great bargaining chip for you, your wrestlers, everybody to be on a bigger stage. You know, I, it was said that wrestle universe has almost double the subscribers of stardom world. It's been alleged anyway uh, on there. So that gives you a lot of talent there. Do you think that they would work with Tokyo Joshi Pro if they were on there? I think so. Why not? Well, you know, I think so, too. I think they should. And that opens up a ton of interesting matches for the Tokyo Joshi Pro talent as well. It's just they've been so hesitant to put the NOAA DDT rosters together <laughs> that uh, I don't. I hope That's that right. they don't think that way uh, with the Joshi talent, ultimately. And even Gonbari Pro hasn't really worked with them that much either. Uh, so I hope that they can break those walls down. I think it would be best for everybody. But Takagi's also said before that he's wanted a more serious Joshi company yep. in the past. Um, for somebody, the person I think of most for Tokyo Joshi Pro, somebody like a Yamashita, like after just losing the title, she doesn't really have any more mountains to climb in Tokyo Joshi Pro. Putting her, having her maybe not an excursion per se, but let her work with the Rossi company more and wrestle these serious wrestlers like Julia Mirai in big matches, I think would help her, like freshen her up a little bit. It would help both companies. So I hope that they let go of whatever this is. We don't want to mix the comedy company and the serious company because I think we'd use them in ways that benefit both. Yeah, and I think Japanese wrestling needs ideas like that right now. And, and they're trying somewhat with this universal deal. Uh, they already announced some matches for that, but the interesting thing about that is all Japan, <laughs> not there. Like uh, for the first show, they're running a show the same day as one of the, the champion carnival shows Well, on there. There's already, like, and we, we talked about it before, like that this is something that we're skeptical of it being a major laster, <laughs> so, so to speak. Uh, but this is already a first, a little bit of a red flag. And I know they're going to do something in June. They, that was cool that they announced another show in June. But it shows that a lot of these companies recognize that they, that working together will benefit them all, hopefully equally. It should. It really should. Yeah. I don't have anything to add to that, to be quite honest. It's just the truth, the gospel, according to Dylan. <laughs> well, it's not the gospel, <laughs> but it's, a, it's just, a, I mean, you know, did you see the matches announced for the the United Japan card at Budokan? I have. All together. It is, it's a bunch of multi-man matches, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we talked That's about it before. These, these kind of shows don't, yeah, don't really pop off. I mean, last year's all together, it had a high expectations being the first one in a long time. But that show wasn't that great outside of the main event, really, uh, I would say. And I think this is a similar, you look at the matches on here and out so far. You've got uh, Tomohiro Ishii and Daisuke Sekimoto taking on Jeff Cobb. Oh, yeah, Masa I saw that. That's a great yeah. match. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be a really cool match. You've got Shota Umino, Kaito Kiyomiya, and Yuki Ueno. They took on Yuya Waimura, Konosuke Takeshita, and Shun Skywalker in a six-man tag. And then the other one was the President's team, uh, Tanahashi, Marafuji, and Sachiro Takagi versus the House of Torture team of Evil, Narita, and Yujiro. Actually, really fun match. Maybe. Yeah, so all three of these are actually fun when yeah, you think yeah, about it on there. And I think that they're taking this more seriously than they did last year was kind of my point on that because uh, I don't think they really put their best effort in to make that show great outside of the main event. Here it looks like they're trying to put a lot of effort to get everybody involved. These are the main companies competing right now. There's obviously going to be some Joshi stuff with Stardom. Uh, it's been talked about Tony Khan, uh, Ran his mouth about Rossi again on the media <laughs> call for for Ring of Honor. He felt the need to bury him once again uh, and talk about how bad working with him was. So, but now it's so much better thanks to Okada uh, being there. So they're yeah, working because together. Because he's a guy you can push around. 
<laughs> I didn't say it. Stringa said that. Tony, TK, if you're listening, he said that. <laughs> Do not put it on me. Uh, no. Send him the emails, not me. Oh, the the yes, I'm sure. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's going to be some starter working together. Uh, Tokyo Jersey Pro, who knows what could happen, who has heat with who uh, on that end. Uh, we're going to see some big Japan probably in here. Uh, so, this could be an like this is this first show is going to set the tone for where these companies are at in terms of working together, but I do think all Japan like running it specifically with all Japan on the Champion Carnival show was interesting to, to, to say the least. And then immediately come out and be like, ah, we're going to try and work hard to where companies don't run the same shows so, so yeah. often. And, uh, no, ah, pretty pretty cool strategy. Wish you had known about that before this show, Evan, <laughs> but. We'll see. Yes, the the schedules were made before Tadashi had the idea of that. Yeah, he just cha- <laughs> he just came up with this on a whim. This idea, like what? <laughs> what? Put it past him. Yeah, why didn't why didn't I think of this before? Run shows at the same time. We don't want to do that. What? <laughs> Who came up with that idea? <laughs> That's Great. good. I like it. <laughs> Shout out to Tadashi. He said good good president, despite what Gabe Kid said. <laughs> Whatever he said. Despite what Gabe Kid said. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a great way to end the show, I guess. Uh, we've been going guess. along for a long time, and uh, we've brought actually brought in all the things that I wanted to discuss on this show. Final thing, maybe you haven't seen the show. I really like the April Fool show that DDT put up. Yeah, and yeah, they did. Yeah. They did a show in America. Then they brought some of their guys back to Japan to work a show on the same weekend. So that's a that's a great schedule. Kudos to all the guys that went to America and back. Um, we had Chris Brooks and Zack Sabre go against Mao and Yuki Ueno in the main event of that show and in, in a match that yeah, I, I was really interested in that. Really, that really liked. Across? Yeah. It was both Zack Sabre being a Zack Sabre and also Zack Sabre being put in the, into a DDT environment, uh, taking a bump through a plastic box. They did some of the uh, crowd brawling with the masked costumes. Zack Sabre was um, in a fight with um, with Chitan, Pokotan, I think it was Pokotan. So yeah, it was it was just a great great mix of of actual great wrestling in the DDT style and the DDT comedy and uh, and goofball style. And I also like really like the tag team match. I think Tomitsu Matsunaga did the best that he could in this situation. Best match for him in ages. He's a guy that used to be a DDT talent for a long, oh, that is a DDT talent for a long, long time. One time opened the, uh, not open the, one time QOD open weight uh, tag team champion with his former, um, Nuru, Nuru brother, Michael Nakasawa. That was fun stuff. Uh, Shuma Matsumata and, uh, Hiroki had a good luck survival deadly weapon. Omikuji match with various items being used in that match, just the usual extreme star, extreme style stuff. And the best match of the show, in my opinion, was Shiro Hashimoto and Shinya Aoki just wrestling a great, great ground-based match. So you definitely have to check that one out. Dylan. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I was pretty hyped to see Zach and DDT team with Brooks that, that would what that would bring out of everybody and how the match would go. And the Hashimoto and Aoki match has great reviews so far. So, yeah, definitely going to check out check it out. Uh, it feels like DDT is doing some good stuff. Really like Ueno as champion. Yeah, and DDT mentioned the Kirkan attendance for Pro Wrestling Noah, and I just have to look at these that DDT have done lately. Of course, they had the Kaisa Takeshi debut. That When was that, actually? Yeah, that did a huge number. Into the fight. It was in February, 1,600 fans. Then they had the five-hour special, Judgment 2024, with 1,491. Now this April Fool show did 1,334 fans as well. The January show also did 1,120 fans. So very successful uh, Kirkenall shows for DDT this year. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think it's... We talked about it a little bit with um, with New Japan, and I do think there's a little bit of a lot of these companies rising up in 2024. We've seen a, a growth in a lot of different ones uh, from last year as well. It's still not probably where you would want it to be overall in general. And I mean, I mean that was a good show. Like Judgment, I thought that was a good show for them. Yep. 
uh, um, also just the number was good. But, you know, in the past, a big show like this would have taken place at Sumo Hall, right. and now it's taking place at Corcoran. And uh, that's something you would want to get back to. Uh, obviously, those were kind of the golden age, again, the start of the, you know, when we were starting on Eastern Larry, uh, 2000, mid-2000s, late 2000s. That's gone away a little bit. But they're at least doing good with what they've got now, and hopefully they do it good enough. And maybe this, uh, what we talked about with the United Japan, that can raise all, you know, high tide can raise all boats. And we get to a place where maybe some of these big shows are now in sumo instead of cork, and, and they can do good. But at least, it's like before, they were doing cork, and they were bad numbers in <laughs> cork. And so now they're doing good stuff in general. So they, they have, we have to give these companies credit. Uh, even if you look at the talent level and, and the way things are going right now in some of these cards, we didn't, we weren't too happy about them on the last episode. But the companies overall are doing pretty good overall, uh, and hopefully they can find a good balance, and, and that could take them all to the next level, including DDT. And now that's good closing words, Dylan. I think we're rich. We've reached the end of the show right now. I was extremely happy to do this with you. We had to postpone this show by two days because I actually had stuff going on at the weekend. I'm glad we did this here uh, on the Monday. So thank you, Dylan, for doing this show. I had a lot of fun. Oh, me too. Uh, I'm so glad we're getting back. I really missed uh, those times when we were out that month. Uh, we're doing a lot better to make sure that don't happen again. And, hey, there's some big stuff happening. Uh, Champion Carnival starting very soon. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to cover stuff. The Windy City Riot and all that's going to be on the Patreon. Uh, so check that out. You're going to get some good stuff. Uh, finally wrapping up 98 on the 90s project as well. Uh, almost done with that decade. And uh, all the cool stuff coming up with Noah. We'll see if they can keep up their momentum. We really liked it. Like you said, we normally don't even talk about them that much, but now they gave us something good, so we, we talked about it. And everything going on with Dragon Gate as well, or coming off of the Ray de Perejas tournament, everything getting covered. Uh, it's going to be fun stuff overall. So check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash Eastern Lariat. Uh, also, check out the Lucha Talk show I did with Microman Fever. We talked about uh, the Dos Landa show last hmm. week, uh, or two weeks ago now, or, or 10 days, whatever ago now uh we talked about the AEW and cml on there talked a little about the insane triple a show we'll see if we'll be back for the april show to cover that <laughs> triple media show uh it's up and down uh, at the end of the month for sure but the cml show was awesome uh really fun to talk about the lucha libre and uh lots of cool stuff going on in wrestling hopefully everybody out there had a great time had a happy easter and had a great wrestlemania weekend whatever you wanted to watch whether it was the indies Japanese wrestling, Lucha Libre, you watched NXT, saw Knuckles and Julia in the crowd, uh, WrestleMania, Cody finishing the story and all that, whatever you like. I hope you guys had a ton of fun, and hopefully you enjoyed the show as well. Absolutely. So thank you all for listening, and goodbye. Sayonara. Sayonara.